मॅडम ते माझ्या मुलाचं ऍडमिशन चालू होतं म्हणून सो सॉरी सो सॉरी गंमत करणार अँड दिलीप वाळके पाटील अँड यस्टरडे वी वेअर टुगेदर ऑन ऑन अ व्हेरी सिमिलर प्लॅटफॉर्म विच वॉज यस्टरडे नो युअर लॉ सो सर दिस ज्ञान गंगा प्रोजेक्ट इज स्टार्टेड अराउंड वन अँड हाफ इयर बॅक इट इज अवर फोर्टीन सिरीज एव्हरी मंथ वी टेक द एव्हरी वी गो टू द स्टेट सर and in yeah, the state sir what are you today are dr suchitra pandit ma'am and dr atul munshi sir monika madam monika mute 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 i will go ahead no yeah i'll hand over the mic so oh, sir so every time we t- took with the telangana we took with the rajasthan the problems of the local states were discussed like you know increased rate of uh, cesarean section so, honor for today uh, dr uh, Uh, gastric nerve prophylactic tumor and all those are very much appreciated Hello? we have a viewer of uh, around 4000 people uh, and obijwan it is very much and we have recorded uh, this thing also of all the episodes and we share with the uh, all the viewers and those who decide also this particular webinar was conceived basically i think we have discussed the already the um, previous uh, meeting we have discussed why it is so important and as ajay was telling and everyone was telling it is the need of the hour sir every alternate day we are facing the problems even the knowledgeable people like us we are unable to give the help to the uh, you know uh, our obijwan sometime they are in the police custody uh, we are getting call that it is not my fault still i, I was arrested in spite of you know the jacob matthews and so many things are we tell in the theory so it is the, actually the need of the hour to make uh, every one of us very much aware of the medical legal uh, you know aspects of their practice and uh, this was basically to keep this and uh, uh, i in, uh, really welcome our sir dr nagpal our chief guest dr dilip varki patil our uh, guest of honor and ajay uh, a guest of honor uh, you know welcome to this series and thank you very much for accepting uh, our invitation for this series and please uh, display the cv of our chief guest nakpal uh, uh, sir no, needs no introduction to the medical legal faculty and i think most of us are really look uh, look up to him for any kind of uh, legal advice or you know tips for our practice he is a chairman the managing trustee of the medical legal action group uh, he is a ex president of ima chandigarh state sir i am coming tomorrow day after to chandigarh oh, director please. of oh, uh, gastrointestinal diagnostic clinic chandigarh member of many organizations international medical science academy affiliated to the institute of medicine and law and sir i think it is the need of the hour that one full law subject should be uh, there in our medical curriculum also you know in spite of the jurisprudence jurisprudence you know teaching us something different but the law should be there which you can really take forward we are all with you and many rti activist speaker social worker influencer and i think he is there you know for us to guide uh, in this particular seminar and also for for in our future uh, whatever problems we have so sir please uh, give your words of wisdom and the blessings blessings well thank you mandakini ma'am <laughs> oh, i i don't know whether i deserve this honor <laughs> but uh, i am i i remember that in february uh, we had organized a ninth medical legal action group mlag conference annual and i had invited shri subramanian swami to be our chief guest okay i had gone to meet him personally and he had very graciously accepted our invitation mm-hmm. just a week or 10 days before the event mm-hmm. i sent a mail to him to confirm and was shocked to know that he had actually forgotten his commitment and was going to kochi on that day okay so we had publicized his participation and overall were very disappointed but we started the uh, conference without him however mm-hmm. on 12th february during our program which was to be held in two halls we needed to merge the uh, both of them into one hall for some reason and we were extremely short on time mm-hmm. so that day we realized that a good chief guest is one who is absent he is the best chief guest for the organizers since it saved us nearly 40 minutes during the course of the day 
<laughs> now, I do not know why Dr. Monica and you decided to have me as a chief guest. And though I'm not absent, I will do the next best thing and talk as less as possible. No, sir. <laughs> you please give us wonderful tips for our all the viewers. Um, you, are, you have a galaxy of speakers. I, I'll, I'll restrain myself to a time. I'll tell you something very few people know. Mm -hmm. that I had started my practice in 1991. That was 32 years ago. And in 92, a case was filed against me in State Consumer Dispute Redressal Commission under CPA. Yes, I was young in a new city and did not know whom I could look up to for advice. Today, you have Dr. Dilip Palke, Dr. Gitender, Dr. Hitesh. You have innumerable number of people who are there to help you and even uh, the local leaderships of IMA uh, are uh, up to the job. But in those days, 32 years ago, for a youngster, it was a very, very traumatic experience. I was depressed as well as angry, but uh, fortunately, with the help of a neighbor who was also an advocate, the case against me was dismissed in preliminary hearing itself. The biggest problem was I could not find any legal references to help me in my case. This difficulty I faced prompted me to do something about it and I compiled the first volume of Compendium of CPA Medical Judgments in 1995. To the best of my knowledge, I think probably this is the first publication in India uh, regarding CPA medical judgments, uh, uh, cases of medical negligence compiled in one book. And after that, of course, uh, on persistent demand, we published a second volume in 2004. But I remember in those days when I used to give lectures to create awareness, there were days when I was laughed at. People would not believe this is an actual problem. It was considered a problem of private practitioners. It was considered a problem of unethical doctors. It was considered a problem of those who fleece others and not the problem of the run of the mill doctors. Yeah. In fact, um, I remember one government medical college, I was uh, giving her a talk there and one HOD really uh, lamblasted me. Uh, the only... Saving grace was three years down the line, he was sitting across my table with a notice which he had received. I did not know whether to feel happy or sad, but this is what I have experienced. And today, I'm really proud to say that I have played maybe a small role in this heightened awareness of medical legal issues that we see today. You have a galaxy of superstars uh, of the field in this seminar. And I really thank you for having given me this honor uh, to be here with you people, though I don't know I'll be able to stay for long yeah. because I have to be in another uh, uh, CME uh, <clears throat> soon, but I'll, I'll say stay as far as possible. So thank you so very much and I wish you all the best. Thank you, Nakpal, sir, for your words of wisdom. And I think behind every successful career, there is some incidents or other which really makes you to do the something. As we know, the ITC hotels were, you know, built because they were denied the access to the Indians. So something, that kind of thing happens, sir. And uh, I also feel the same way. And I am really planning to really say something to do with the clinicians. Even, you know, in any post or not, I don't know. But sir, I want to do something for the clinicians and make them in the bureaucracy. That is my dream because yes. I work very closely with the bureaucracy and the power will come when you are actually in power, then only the power. will. So thank you very much, sir, for your presence and giving us the time. Now, please uh, display the... Uh, now our second uh, guest of honor, a really pleasure to my have younger brother, Dr. Dilip Varke. Yesterday also we were together and he was wishing everything to me, Dilip, thank you very much. And Dilip is now, uh, he has become full-fledged, almost full-fledged medical legal consultant. That is what we came to know. He is a consultant, Vitalife Medipoint Hospital Hound and Jupiter Hospital, Baner, Pune, chairman of the Ethics Medical Legal Committee. And we heard that there were three chairperson of medical legal in the Pune city 
including Dr. Sanjay Bhupte, you and Manish Machwe, President of Pune Obijwai Society. He is the author of the Uniform Consent, I think, which will be very useful for all of us. Director of the OSPIA Art Gamut Services Private Limited and Advisory Board member of Dr. Prax Telemedicine Solution. So with this, I invite our guest of honor to say, you know, give us blessings and the words of wisdom. Dilip. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mandakini, for your kind words in the introduction. And as a good guest of honor, uh, I, I think uh, just as uh, Neeraj said, a good uh, chief guest is the one who is not present. A good <laughs> guest of honor is the one who talks less. So I'm going to talk less today. But uh, at the outset, I must appreciate the efforts of Mandakini make, Madam, uh, as the chief convener of this concept of Gyan uh, with Vatta series. So congratulations to you for that. And before we get engrossed in the topic of medical legal aspect, I have to say something from my heart. And that is, uh, whenever I uh, choose uh, somebody as a president of Foxy, I look for someone who is humble, who is simple, who is down to earth and concerned not about me, my, myself, but about Foxians. And you can see all that in one person that is Mandakini make. So at the outset, let me tell that uh, uh, she deserves to be uh, the president of Foxy and we all should join yeah. hands to make her the president of Foxy. And I also need to say thanks to the organizers, especially Monica, for having me as the guest of honor because uh, uh, to share the platform alongside stalwarts like Neeraj Nagpal, Ajay Mane, Gitendra, Dr. M.C. Patel, Mani, Shalka, Girish Kuntekar, Sudesh Joshi and other itself is an honor for me. I mean, though I am a get of, guest of honor, it is an honor that I'm sharing uh, uh, the platform with all of this. And I can see several names in the flyer like... Uh, uh, who, are, who are going to be the future medical legal uh, people of Foxy, like uh, Suyoga, Saili, Swarupa, and many others who are going to uh, be the faculty today. Uh, and I'm sure uh, you all are going to get uh, good tips on safe practice today. And I do not want to come in between you all and the deliberations. But I thought uh, I have to make one observation, uh, which you can discuss today, because this is something new that, has, that I think has come up. Medical legal experts always tell you that we doctors should refrain from passing comments on treatment given by other doctors. So this we all know. But nowadays what is happening is uh, that we see many a WhatsApp group form wherein the administ uh, admin shows how he managed the complication done by other laparoscopic surgeons and how he is the only one who can uh, manage a ureteric implant or he is the only one who can manage colostomies. So now what is happening with these things that are coming on the social media, it gives a narrative that most of the gynecologists create complications and there are only few who can manage complications. Now, this is not something that we should do on a social media. So I request these members of our uh, community not to have social media, not to use social media for this. This is an educational thing. So you can have small groups wherein you can show your videos and you can have discussion but to carry all this on a social media eventually uh, creates a narrative amongst uh, the people that uh, the doctors of this city, the gynecologists of this city only create complication and somebody has to come from this city and this person has to come and manage the complication. So I thought uh, uh, if time permits, you can take this up, Mandakini, and uh, you can have a discussion on this as we go along in this. I wish you all a grand success. I wish Mandakini a great success for our election and I wish Gan uh, this particular series also a grand success. I'm going to wait till the end because I am a big fan of all the faculty members uh, who are going to speak today. So whatever time it takes, I'm going to be there with you. Uh, Thank you. To listen to this uh, whole series. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dilip. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dilip, for that wonderful words of uh, wisdom and giving us a very important direction that what should we discuss and that I think everybody is concerned that uh, you said very correctly that there should be a discussion or if it needs uh, there be there should be actually uh, some kind of uh, uh, regulation that they cannot discuss such kind of things in the open group rather than they should have a closed group and they should discuss and they should not discuss it in open and sometimes there may be medical legal arising out of it. they may say if you have uh, done the ureteric repair or colostomy, so from where it has come. And then, you know, it may start the 
vicious circle so you said very very correctly if time permits we are going to discuss that also and thank you very much for again for coming to this forum and wishing us the best please uh, thank you so now our next guest of honor is none other than our ajay our own person uh, ajay my younger brother uh, he is a very well known uh, uh, figure in marathwada and now he is a vice president elect of the poxi and wishing you all the best for your regime uh, ajay madam madam we can skip that we'll save time and he talks thank you the, yeah pcp ndt another uh, you know so many and very popular figure in the emox also ex superintendent of the mgm medical college indore trainer of poxi aurangabad 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 sorry and uh, chartered rotary uh, club of aurangabad he like so thank you viewers ajay please give your words of wisdom and the best wishes for the program thank you madam thank you very much i am not that uh, big or tall to give words of wisdom i'll uh, uh, wish just best luck to you and monika madam for this gyana ganga so you are distributing the knowledge so it is for the benefit of everybody and as neeraj sir and dilip sir said we need to give them continuously the knowledge After CME, after two days, somebody calls and asks, "Sir, oh, amendment में नया अभी क्या आया है? जरा बताना थोड़ा सा." तो हमने बोला उसको CME में आए थे ना? हाँ, आए थे सर पर वो क्या है? जब मैं खाना खा रही थी तब आपका लेक्चर चालू था. So this is the situation. So उनका जब तक खुद के गले तक नहीं आता, तब तक they won't listen. And जब आता है तब ऐसा है. तो dear sir, you are praising a lot. तो आपके पीछे पीछे हम भी आ रहे. आपका गीतेंद्र भाई का, यमसे पटेल सर का पहला generation है, मेरा दूस फिर संतोष मनीष ये और दिलीप अपने ये स्वदेश सर का इनका तीसरा जनरेशन है कर रहे हम सब लोग मिलके सो विल हैव अ गुड कम्युनिकेशन एंड गुड शेयरिंग ऑफ नॉलेज सो बेस्ट लक टू यू मंदा की मैडम फॉर योर इलेक्शन ऑल्सो एंड बेस्ट लक टू डॉक्टर ज्योति भी आई कैन सी हर फॉर हर चेयरपर्सनशिप फॉर द चेयरपर्सन ऑफ मेडिकल लीगल कमिटी सो थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर कॉलिंग मी एंड आई एम एज दिलीप सर सेड आई बी हेयर टिल एंड so this yeah. is a very nice because topics are very nice and the faculties uh, except gorak madrupur every uh, medical legal person from india is here today uh, why gorak yeah. is there yeah only gorak is not there but everybody is there so yeah. thank you thank you yeah. thank you mandakini madam and monika madam for giving me the chance thank so, you and yeah. best luck rekha madam best luck yeah thank you ajay for the wonderful observations also i i also want to tell you one incident i was in delhi and that was the early days of pcp ndt say 10 12 years back and sir i was talking very intensely and so many people were leaving the hall and uh, next day when i came to mumbai next day in the evening i got a night 11 o'clock got a call from the muzaffarpur madam mera aisa aisa uh, ceiling ho gaya machine ka bhi main kya karu but i said maine aapko hall se bahar jaate dekha hai and my lecture was just started so <laughs> because i noticed and till today i remember and i, I noticed that particular person maine bola aap to hall ke bahar chale gaye the abhi raat ko 11 baje main kaise batau us din main aayi thi na delhi to sir aisi baat hoti so now people should also be uh, you know uh, you know intently uh, listening to the speaker who actually give their time uh, they are so much uh, sacrificing their practice and all so i think raja uh, it's a very good point that uh, they should also listen to the experts so thank you very much all of you chief guest and both the guests of honor and now we have our star faculty waiting here so chair person uh, chair persons uh, the first slide sir amit sir mm -hmm. so we are now going to start very interesting session thank so, you so much neeraj sir Uh, Dilip sir and Ajay Mane sir for gracing this occasion. Uh, I now declare that the inauguration of this webinar is over, and we now move forward to the academic sessions. Uh, the first chairperson for today is um, talk is Dr. Manish Machwe sir. Uh, Manish Machwe sir is a gyne uh, gynecologist with a medical legal experience of twenty years in the field. He has completed his MBBS from BJ Medical College and has been a gold medalist from Pune University. Mm -hmm. Uh, sir is also the ex vice president of obgy society of the pune and a life member of uh, various associations but he is just a phone call away in case of medical legal help we welcome you sir as a chairperson uh, ma'am uh, i spoke to sir he is in an emergency so you can introduce uh, gitendra sir he will join in some time ma'am okay yes 
Now it's a, it's a pleasure for me to again uh, introduce our very, very important person, Vice President, and my, I can call my younger brother again, uh, Dr. Jitendra Sharma, a very popular figure all over India and uh, uh, our Vice President, uh, current uh, sitting Vice President from the West Zone. So Dr. Jitendra Sharma is a practicing gynecologist after 30 years. Medical legal counselor. I know him as a medical legal counselor, done LLB with 15 gold medals, top the Gujarat University, author of many books, law in OBGYN, consents, uh, law as a doctor must know, given more than 16,000, 1600 lectures, 10 orations. He is a very popular vice president, chairperson, ethics and medical legal committee, president of AOGS and honorary joint uh, secretary of SOGA. So we welcome you, Dr. Jitendra, and we are very eager to listen to you. And welcome the Santosh also. Santosh, I can see Santosh, you are here. And many faculty, please rename yourself. Faculties, please rename yourself. Yeah. So Jitendra, why? Stage is yours. Thank you, madam. Okay. Uh, at the outset, I will like to pay my regards to uh, Dr. Neeraj Nakwal, Dr. Dirit Balke, and all my friends today present. Uh, Dr. Ajay Mane, Dr. San, uh, Santosh is there, Dr. Uh, Rekha Rajendran, and Dr. Jyoti Banglowala. So I pay my Dr. Varsha Lade. So all uh, my friends, I pay my regards and remembrance from my side. Uh, Really, really uh, great to see that uh, Dr. Mandakini, Madam, and Dr. Monica, Madam, are uh, uh, through their uh, activity like uh, Gyan Prava or Ganga Prava, hmm, they are uh, giving the knowledge or acknowledging uh, every member of the Foxy. So I know that Dr. Mandakini, Madam, is so much helpful to everybody, particularly in Maharashtra and uh, all over India. Uh, to sort out whenever there is problem in their practice. Uh, maybe it is MTP Act or PCPNDT Act or in any other way. So uh, definitely I endorse each and every word of Dr. Dilip Valke that the most humble person, the most able person and the most helpful person, uh, Dr. Mandakini, Madam, we give you uh, best of luck and uh, we wish that you will win the election and be our next president. I pay my uh, I give my best of best wishes to Dr. Jyoti Banglowala also to be a chairperson of Ethics and Medical Legal Committee. Thank you very much. Uh, today the uh, lecture given to me is MTP. What are what is new? So in that regard, I am not going to show you a PPT because I am just now sitting in a lounge at Hyderabad. I went to Varangal, but there are floods in Varangal and the Godavari river is completely flooded and there is complete water in Varangal. So I cut short my visit to Varangal and I have now come to Hyderabad. So I am just now sitting in the lounge at Hyderabad. So <laughs> pardon me for the same for not showing PPT. Now regarding MTP, uh, see there are only five, six things which we should know that what new has come. So the first thing which we should know that previously in 1971 act which was amended in 2003 there were provision that if you want to do mtp up to 12 weeks then opinion of only one doctor was required and if you want to do mtp in between 12 to 20 weeks the opinion of not less than two gynecologists or rmps were required and about 20 weeks termination was not allowed without the permission of high court or intervention of high court but now in new amendment, the situation has changed. What is the change we should know? That first thing that up to 20 weeks, you can continue terminating the pregnancy with one opinion, opinion of one RMP only. So you can terminate with one opinion only that is in form one. So opinion form is form one and in which only one opinion uh, is uh, now needed to do MTP up to 20 weeks. Now they have allowed termination up to 24 weeks. And the law says that if you want to terminate the pregnancy, you can terminate the pregnancy under seven indications, which were given 
uh, over uh, in the rules under form E. And you are supposed to fill form E and that is to be signed by minimum two RMPs. So not less than two RMPs should frame the opinion to give the opinion to terminate the pregnancy under those seven indication and they have to fill form E for the same with form C. Then third thing we should know that previously termination was not allowed after 20 weeks, but now uh, the termination is even allowed after 24 weeks. But the provision for terminating after 24 weeks, uh, that is the only indication is that where there is a fatal uh, ab abnormality in the child. So uh, to be born in future. So if there is congenital malformation, which is fatal for its well-being or for living of the child, then you can terminate the pregnancy after 24 weeks. But whether that anomaly is enough to allow termination, it will be decided by the district medical board. So every district or every state will have their medical board. And in that medical board, one gynecologist will be the member, one pediatrician will be there, one son sonologist will be there, minimum three members and more members can be there in any state uh, if government uh, decides so. So this board will give opinion within 72 hours of the application after going through all the reports of the patient. And up, uh, if they want a few more investigations to be done, they can definitely demand those investigations to be done to know that which kind of anomaly uh, is there. So there is no list till date available, but this district medical board, after going through all the records of the uh, patient, they will decide that whether termination uh, in this particular case is to be allowed or not. And if they allow termination uh, within 72 hours, uh, they are supposed to give the opinion. And once their opinion uh, is, re uh, uh, we got the opinion, then within 42 or 48 hours of getting the opinion, we should terminate the pregnancy. And, and that pregnancy should be terminated by two gynecologists, minimum two gynecologists should be there. And the place where we are terminating, the pregnancy should have the facility of operation theater as well as sonography machine in the hospital. So these are a few things. Now, uh, a question comes in our mind that whether we can terminate the pregnancy caused by rape after 24 weeks. So answer is uh, literally no. So even till today, if you want to terminate the pregnancy after 24 weeks under the indication of rape, then you have to proceed to uh, court and get the opinion of the court. And if only court permits, then only you can terminate the pregnancy after 24 weeks. The fourth thing which we should keep in our mind uh, that previously, uh, see up to 20, uh, 20 weeks indications were there. And the fifth indication out of those five indications which were narrated in form one, it was contraceptive failure. And that contraceptive failure indication was only available uh, to married woman. It was not available to unmarried girl. So whenever some unmarried girl used to come to our place for termination, we used to tick mark the second number indication, which says that continuation of pregnancy may lead to mental torture to the lady, to the uh, girl who has come for the termination. So we were terminating under that indication. But dear friends, now uh, in this new amendment, uh, they have now allowed the termination of pregnancy in unmarried girl uh, under that indication of contraceptive failure. So uh, we should keep in our mind that now we can terminate the pregnancy for contraceptive failure in unmarried girl also. So you can definitely tick mark that indication uh, of MTP Act. Then fifth thing, that previously breach of confidentiality. Uh, we all know that uh, even in MTP Act, breach of confidentiality uh, it was uh, considered as violation of MTP Act. And what was that? In that, it was said that Rule 7.2 was there. And according to that Rule 7.2, uh, it was mentioned that we cannot divulge the confidentiality of a woman. And for that, only uh, as it was a part of, uh, it is mentioned in regulation that if you will not maintain the confidentiality of woman, then you have to pay 1000 rupees fine. But now in this act, uh, 
uh, there is a amendment there is an amendment which says that uh, if you breach the confidentiality of the woman then it amounts to uh, the punishment for the same was up to one year imprisonment and over and above fine also so dear friends although they have not defined what what uh, will make the breach of confidentiality and without even explaining what is breach of confidentiality such kind of punishment is unreasonable so that's what i was telling from the very first day that that representation must be done because we don't know what is breach of confidentiality suppose you prescribe mtp pill on prescription paper then according to drug and cosmetic act you cannot prescribe any medicine without putting the name on the prescription paper and if you put the name and prescribe mtp pill will it amount to breach of confidentiality of woman answer nobody knows whether some sometimes police comes for the for getting the uh, data of a patient under inquiries so should we divulge that names of the patient to uh, a police person whether it amounts to breach of confidentiality again answer we do not know many a times even appropriate authorities under mtp act comes for inspection and they uh, ask to see the admission register that is form 3 in which names of the patient again serial number are been put so whether they are allowed to see the uh, register or not whether it amounts to breach of confidentiality or not so nothing is clear and without clarifying that what amounts to breach of confidentiality punishment for one year imprisonment is literally unreasonable so these are few things which which are been uh, new under mtp act previously mtp pill uh, people uh, doctor was allowed to prescribe mtp pill for 7 weeks only now they have clarified in this act that you can prescribe mtp pill for medical abortion up to 9 weeks so and these are a few things which are new under mtp act although amendment has come but even after amendment there are multiple loopholes in the mtp act and they are never been they are not been solved by the government of india and uh, really uh, i i don't understand why they amend act without consulting the medico legal people because uh, till date even today after the amendment they could not define what is mtp so mtp is still not defined Uh, the uh, particular section which uh, which is in regard to cognizance of the offence or compoundable or bailable or not bailable that section is always there in act but in mtp act there is no section which is available which uh, defines that whether the uh, this pun punishment under mtp act will be cognizable or bailable or non bailable or compoundable or non compoundable so nothing is clear one more thing that the appropriate authority under mtp act is cdho or cdmo and the appellate authority under mtp act is also cdmo so how can it be this is the violation of natural justice hmm? so the person uh, who decides his case himself hmm? so he becomes judge in appeal appeal also so th these kind of acts are not valid acts and not uh, i can say good act uh, as far as uh, my understanding is concerned and there are multiple things which are needed to be changed which are needed to be amended but till date we got these many amendments which i have mentioned uh, in front of you so dear friends uh, it was uh, really uh, i am really uh, delighted that i have been invited to deliver lecture in gyan ganga and to be the part of campaign of dr bindakini uh, meg madam and i wish her best of luck once again for her uh, uh, future endeavor in foxy thank you thank you very much madam uh, thank you jitendra bhai though you could not show the powerpoint but the, your knowledge itself is so illuminous and very matter of fact and very perfect what i uh, said and you said that you know there are different authority for different uh, you know justice everybody agrees here so even in the pcp and it is a district authority it comes to the state authority you know appeal is always to the higher authority if it is by the state authority then it comes to mantralaya like, is to come to us there so of course the authority should be different there are many loopholes 
So Nakpal sir is here. Nakpal sir can also comment. And uh, I think this loophole should be again a part of the fourth amendment. The first amendment was after so many years, that is 2003. Then now, now the amendment has come. And then the fourth amendment, which have practical difficulties, which uh, I think we all are facing. So Nakpal sir, uh, your comments, one or two comments, sir, please. On this okay. important, important thing here is, these are issues which are known. These are issues which Gitender has been uh, speaking about for a long time. My point is, why or us as organizations, we do not send representations, we do not follow up on those representations and file a writ in case the representations are not acted upon. It is very simple. I have a very small organization, Medicus Legal Action Group. We are 1,100 people. We have six cases ongoing in Supreme Court, six cases in Punjab and Arena High Court. For an organization like Foxy to get this thing amended and appropriately amended should not be a task at all, especially with the help of people like uh, Dilip and Gitender and Hitesh and so many uh, stalwarts. So what we need to do is, what you said initially is, we need to join in the activism. Start using RTI, start using the, the uh, avenues available to us. And no amendment is made without being put in public domain first. My question remains, do our organizations bother to give a representation when the issue is put in public domain? Before it is notified, it is always put in public domain. So make it a point and hold people responsible if they do not give suggestions when the issue is in public domain. Yes, sir, very correctly said. And we as an organization, we look at, you know, from the organization point of view. In our POXI also, we are 38,000 members. Yes. So one section, I think a big section should be kept only for such kind of things and we should have appointed lawyers. We had for the PCP entity, but we could not go to the conclusion level. But I think for every act now, we have ART Act, we have so many acts. So I think we should have that, sir. We'll keep in mind and we'll act on this and we'll inform our authorities. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Now, uh, Monica. Yes, Monica, can you unmute yourself, please? Are you there, Monica? Monica is not there. So now I will like to introduce our next uh, chairperson, Dr. Alka Kuthe. Uh, yesterday we had wonderful seminar and Dr. Alka Kuthe is known all over as a consultant, uh, especially for the medical legal aspect because she is LLM in criminology and PG uh, in diploma. Madam, human rights. Hello. Natsala, tumi bola. Madam Bolu, sorry, network mother issue the unmute hot nota. Okay, okay, no problem. Yeah. Uh, I welcome Alka Kute, madam, as a chairperson for this session. She is LLB, LLM uh, in criminology. She is the chairperson of IMA Maharashtra State Medical Legal Cell, the national coordinator for Foxy Ethics and Medical Legal Committee, the IMA Mission Pink Health uh, Regional Coordinator in the year 2016 and 17. The Women's Wing, uh, IMA Maharashtra Executive Member for the year 1718. She has been the past president of Indian Medical Legal and Ethics Association, the past president of BPNI Maharashtra State, the Central Coordinator Committee of the Central BPNI Delhi, the founder member and national secretary of Human Milk Banking Association in India. We welcome you, ma'am. And I request you to please introduce our chairperson for the session, Dr. Mandakini Meg, madam. Alka, ma'am, uh, share slide. Yeah. Yes, I'm here. Amit, sir, please this... share madam's slide, please. Right. Yeah. So, thank you, Dr. Monica, for involving me in this medical legal Gyana Ganga conference. That's it. That is actually my passion to work in this medical legal field. And I can see Dr. Niraj Nakpal, sir, Dr. Gitendra Sharma, Dr. Varke, those who have, Dr. Sanjay Gupta, sir, those who have inspired me to work in this medical legal field. That's a need of your work. So I have to introduce Dr. Mandakini Vek Madam. Actually, Dr. Mandakini Vek Madam doesn't need any introduction. She is a passionate teacher of many of us, but this is just a formality to introduce her. She was the chairperson of ICOG Proxy in 2020-21, president of Association of Medical Women in India Central Council. 
she was international vice president mwia central asia national vice president in the year 2012 2013 and now she is going to contest for president proxy elections so our best wishes to you madam for the forthcoming election you are the senior person doing work since many years and very ground to uh, down to earth person humble person always help us whenever we have some problem she is always ready to guide us actually there are many accolades i can add in her cv but uh, looking at the constraint of the time her only introduction will be she is a contestant for foxy president <laughs> elections and the second one she is a very ground this uh, person human great human being always ready to help you in any time and has many uh, post many awards and even uh, publications to her credit thank you dr monica for giving me chance a uh, best yeah. wishes to madam can i share the because i am unable to share now i can share yeah i can share now okay hmm. until madam joins uh, starts her lecture uh, with the permission of madam i would like to declare that i am going to contest uh, chairperson foxy ethics and medical committee elections i am working in the committee since 25 years i have done post graduation i don't, don't want to repeat the thing again so please uh, i seek your blessings and please vote for me thank you madam vandana madam so good evening good evening everyone and thank you very much nakul sir and all the illuminaries for uh, being there so now i am going to discuss basically on the art act is implementation update on the government resolutions which has been uh, passed uh, and there are many difficulties also in the art after the art act there are implementation difficulties also so this was uh, surrogacy act was passed in 2021 and the lok sabha has passed this assisted reproductive technology bill in the bill excluded the living couples there are many you know exclusion in this particular um, uh, this act and also lgbtq community committee and i i we have long been going to the art clinics this is one of my pictures where we were allotted all madhya pradesh rajasthan uh, you know to for our art and ivf clinic and that time we realized that only pcp entity will not do because ivf and art clinics needs a uh, special attention and needs special act and after so much of the follow the art act and ivf act came into the picture so these are our uh, photographs when we used to even go for the uh, this test to baby centers and ivf clinics and you can see all the authorities here uh, of uh, various states government of india etc and this is a gr which has been passed in the i'm just in the beginning only we are saying because after seven months of continuous following with the government and dr sanjay gupta and all the senior law expert were telling why government is not taking out the gr because there were no registration of uh, in under the art clinic though the act was passed but the gr because of the gr nobody was giving the registration even for the a category b category art clinics so this was a great news and it was really hard work to you know uh, bring this gr because authorities were not that much uh, you know positive about implementation and this is my you know um, i want to really humbly want to say that i was on this various post of government where we did lot of work as far as the pcp entity is concerned public health you know maternal mortality is concerned and so many acts even the mtp act uh, 2003 i was a, a part of that amendment and we could succeed so now regulating the art act the bill establishes the national board the state board and the national registry to regulate and supervise the assisted reproductive technology clinics because it establishes the art bank to promote the ethical practices i remember so many people coming to me when there was a death of a young girl uh, who was uh, below 18 and the, her uh, this ovaries were taken uh, she died after the uh, giving that uh, ova donation the doctor was facing the charges and uh, he came to my office and that time we realized so much irregularities are happening because there is no law to govern or the supervise this art clinic 
it proposes the stringent punishment that is how the art act has come it proposes the stringent punishment for those who attempt to control the offspring sex even in this gametes also you cannot do the uh, sex selection sell the embryo or the gametes we remember so many times from the from even from the bangkok and other countries the gametes and they used to um, used to come and you know they used to be delivered in mumbai there are many cases uh, for that also so in february 20 there are 570 art clinics under the national registry of art clinics banks in india and icmr so these are the number at present we have 570 art clinics so this parliament again this is a repeat and uh, assisted uh, reproductive so what are the most important key points and what is the background so background of this act to be brought in was that government had working on the bill to regulate the art and industry because at one time <clears throat> at one time uh, it was the heaven for the foreign uh, foreign couples and it was a surrogacy capital of the world and it has lot of uh, medical tourism also uh, because of the surrogacy when it was first drafted by the indian council of medical research the bill was first introduced in lok sabha in 2020 but the house had referred it to a standing committee and the national registry and registration authority which were the bill proposes the establishment of the national registry and registration authority for all the clinics and so now we know that you have to first the was register at the national registry and then come to the state and that is how they can uh, have the central data and they know exactly they can they know that how much work has been done is being done in the country it will help in maintaining the database of all the clinics and medical professionals serve in the so better you know it will have a lot of visibility how many clinics because in our days when i used to go for this art clinics that time long but there were no art clinics there were only genetic clinics and i used to say there are only 23 genetic clinics in maharashtra i used to go emapur andare here i was and then bcp entity came later and then now the art clinics have come so that time you know data was you know and their computer was also not there much of the data couldn't be you know regularized now we have everything and we have national registry state government will appoint registration authority for facilitating the registration process and the registration will be valid for 5 years and can be re renewed for the another 5 years so now with this gr which i have shown which was taken out on the 14th of june now the state government have has appointed uh, the registration authority i will come to it later i think we have some difficulty they have whom they have given the authority who will be in the in the board it is all the state uh, of maharashtra we will discuss few points regarding that also it seeks to regulate the supervise the assisted reproductive technology art clinics art banks it should prevent the misuse and adopt the safe and ethical practices national board will propose the constitution of a national board there were two boards one will be the state board and another national board and then state the minimum standard for the physical infrastructure now there will be uh, they have also said that there will be stringent punishment for practicing sex selection sale of human embryos etc which i have already said and the punishment is like this 5 lakhs 10 lakhs or 10 to 20 lakhs or there will be some uh, imprisonment uh, for 10 years so we need the standardized pro protocol there are uh, there are many such art clinics that have been running without the regulation implication on the health of those who undertake the procedure and ethical practices were on the increase so to protect the women and children the oocy donor needs to be supported by an insurance cover multiple embryos implantation need to be regulated children born through art need to be protected so this were the this is the background just to protect the women and children and the unregulated uh, art uh, you know practices this bill was brought in so concerns will be the discrimination in the accessibility the bill allows for a married heterosexual couple and a woman above the age of uh, above the age of marriage to use the art and exclude the single men now there will not be any tushar kapoor or kiran this uh, current jobber type people 
also the cohabiting heterosexual couple lgbtq and individual so they have prevented all these people excluded everybody now this art is used in infertility we know that and ivf is the most common and effective type of art so art procedure sometimes use uh, donor eggs donor sperm previously frozen embryo so it may also the surrogate career so uh, this uh, state art is uh, regulatory board and district corporation uh, we were notified on the 13 june 22 and the district medical board for surrogacy was notified but it has to be rules and guidelines received from the ministry of health and family welfare shared with all the district people so this was at the center and we, we recently on the 14 june uh, 2023 we go we got the uh, this um, uh, this spectacal this thing gr from the government for the implementation in the maharashtra so under this act what is the procedure of registration very important all clinics banks for undertaking assisted reproductive technology to render assisted uh, reproductive technology procedure shall be duly registered in this act so that is that we all know now every application for registration shall be made to the national registry this i was telling it is not like mtp act or it is not like a pcp entry where the directly state authority will give the registration no this we have to be uh, doing at the national registry through the appropriate authority in the such form with the prescribed fees every clinic or bank which considers uh, conducting assisted reproductive technology partly or exclusively shall be within the period of 60 days so they they have to give the registration within the 60 days and no clinics or bank shall be registered under this act unless the appropriate authority is satisfied that such clinics and banks are in position to provide such facilities and maintain such equipment i think this is a very standard i don't want to repeat it is like pcp and everybody should have minimum standards whatever is given in the act in their clinic i think everybody will have all those things now what are the advice and guidelines given uh, for the appropriate authority uh, what is a, this is a government of maharashtra additional director has given me the uh, this flow chart what will be the procedure perfect procedure the procedure for registration under the art and surrogacy act so art clinic 1 art clinic 2 art bank and the surrogacy clinic we have to apply to the post to the national registry portal online online will uh, Uh, will uh, apply after the copy of the online application to be submitted to the respective district the same copy will be uh, uh, given to our own local district or corporation authority prescribed fee to be submitted to the respective district we will be submitting to the so what is the fees art clinic 1 and art bank will be having 50000 i think everybody of us know art clinic 2 and surrogacy clinic will be 2 lakhs now inspection by the respective district corporation or availability of equipment services as per rules if everything is okay as per the rules then the respective district corporation will uh, issue the registration to surrogacy clinic or the art clinic 1 2 or art bank etc uh, after the inspection if everything is okay then the power of delegation committee will submit the report to the appropriate to the approval to the so once the uh, this uh, inspection takes place they will be issuing the registration either it will be rejected or it will be approved so rejected will be this is state family welfare bureau will inform uh, respective districts etc so this is a very simple chart i think everybody should keep it the how actually we should proceed for the registration <coughs> then on receipt of the application appropriate threshold within the 30 days 30 days ma mind you that grant of registration to the subject of provision provisions in this act made under the provided registration number reject the application so it should be done everything in the 30 days now if the appropriate authority fails to grant the registration or reject the application the uh, the appropriate authority shall Uh, within a period of seven days from the expiry of the said period, thirty days specified under this will provide a reason for failure. They have to give a reason why they fail to give the registration. If within a period of one month of registration being granted, 
this section such registration to the state board and the state board will maintain so anyway i think to make it simple we have said that it should be given in the 30 days and within a seven days they have to notify that why they have not given that is it's simple so these were the registrations we were giving before the art act now no registration shall be granted unless the state board has inspected the person. now i remember the case of pune where dr sanjay gupta has brought to the notice <coughs> that for the art registrations were given in the pune by the corporation and after say 8 to 15 days all the registrations were cancelled and all the pune people were so much confused why madam uh, why uh, sir it has been cancelled they thought there is something wrong with their own centers so this thing was brought to my notice i went to the state authority sir what is this he said ki because the appropriate authority or the municipal authority has acted on their own before the gr because the gr has not come in the gr it will be written who who can do the inspection and for that matter we have cancelled the registry <clears throat> so this was a practical thing which has come in the maharashtra particularly in maharashtra so registration granted under this section will be valid for a period of 5 years and the certificate will be displayed and you know etc etc and registration granted under section 16 may be renewed after the 5 years so this is uh, the uh, registration process now if you fail to follow all the rules and regulation then what are the cognizance uh, of the offense will be taken so no court shall take cognizance of offense punishable under the, except the complaint in writing the complaint to it cannot be oral while in pcp entity a uh, complaint may be oral it may be anonymous it may be anything but here the complaint should be in writing and the appropriate authority concerned or any officer uh, in this we have central government as the case may be person including a social organization who has given a notice not less than 15 days in the manner it will not be entertained if it is not given in writing 15 days before then only it can be taken cognizance of so these are the things it may be leading to such complaint after the ins inspection or inquiry may lead to appropriate authority may uh, on the complaint issue a show cause notice or reasonable opportunity being called to the appropriate authority uh, and if there is a breach of provision they can suspend the registration or cancellation of registration a KP copy of the cancellation will be given to the respective state board in the appeal the clinic or bank or commissioning couple or the women within a period of 30 days from the date of receipt of communication relating to the order of rejection suspension or cancellation passed by appropriate authority so they can go to the appeal to the state government so these are the when the two we took out the gr we went to the many authorities these are the state authorities the deputy directors are there and i think we have taken a lot of public awareness for our own obgyrt clinics and we could have a very uh, you know fruitful discussion regarding the art now coming back to the gr which has been taken here it is in marathi nepal sir but uh, marathi also and it has given that who who will be the authority at the uh, in the committee it will be assistant director it will be jilla i mean district uh, uh, i mean district uh, civil surgeon and district government uh, a lady um, i mean uh, uh, senior go government gynecologist and the senior government pediatrician will be the uh, will be inspecting authority and for bombay it will be thane civil surgeon and the uh, thane uh, this uh, uh, gynecologist and the pediatrician will be there and all this is uh, will be done uh, it will be all the state authority will be the state family welfare bureau so this is the art law which i think uh, everybody wants to know and also wants to register their clinic and these are the offenses if they it is used for sex selection punishment up to 5 year or uh, 1 lakh rupees extended up to 20 25 lakhs any rmp selling the embryo then the punishment you can see 5 lakhs or 10 lakhs and 3 years imprisonment if the contravention of the act uh, then there will be punishment of 5 lakh, 10 lakh, all this, uh, you know, uh, is given. And the national registry, uh, the portal uh, address is this, uh, the registry plus surrogacy, 
Maharashtra has received 867 applications till now and 232 applications are priority rank and these are the pending application for, and surrogacy clinic also started registrations. And uh, these are the registration fee, I have already said 50,000 and two lakhs. And the uh, ART bank will be screening, collection, registration of semen, a donor cryo and sperms, operate the semen banks and surrogacy clinic will be having this, all the surrogacy technology. And these are inst instruction. Now a bit about the surrogacy law, which is passed with the ART. And actually the authorities were drawn because of this celebrity, because everybody, everybody was going for the surrogates. And even the single parents like Tushar Kapoor and so many. So that brought the you know notice of the uh, authority and the surrogacy. Uh, I think uh, uh, Dr. Mandakini Meg Madam has lost connection. I think so. Monica, just see whether Madam has lost connection. Hello? Probably Madam has lost connection. Uh -huh, madam has lost connection, ma'am. Just see whether she is going back in a minute's time, ma'am. Wait, I'll just call her again. Yes. Ma'am, in the meantime, uh, we can take the feedback from others also. Ha, huh, madam. Yes. Hello. So I think. Um, ma'am. Time and time. Time and time, madam. Ma'am, ma light parat ke liye. So she will come in one minute. Okay, I think just before that, uh, I would like to say just one or two things so that we can take comments or questions from other people or in the mm -hmm. chat box. I think Madam has given very comprehensive information about the ART Act. You know, there are many confusions regarding acts and regulations. Till now, when uh, whatever conference I attend on ART Act, many, uh, many discussions are still going on and people are not clear about rules and regulations and provisions. But only one thing is clear. There is punishment if anybody violates the provisions of the ART Act. And again, there are many difficulties, practical difficulties one will come across when there is actually implementation of the Act. Dr. Gitenda Sharma is here, Dr. Nakwa sir is here. If one go through the uh, provisions of the Act, we'll come to know that a city like Bombay, Calcutta, Pune, or bigger city, cosmopolitan cities, it is center is or main authority is given to corporation. How that municipal corporation at a corner of that city is going to monitor or control all the IIT clinics. So the recent guidelines say that corporation area or the person who is the head of the corporation, health municipal officer, he will be the controlling authority. And a city like Mumbai, if the corporation is at Thane or at the one corner of that particular city, it's very difficult to monitor also and control the clinics. Even the persons who owes clinic, it will be difficult for him also to seek uh, advice or to submit a report, whatever uh, communication generally we have with district civil surgeon or our health officer, because the cities are, as compared to uh, Bombay, Pune, Calcutta, they are the smaller cities. But they, you, the cosmopolitan cities, this is not practical. So what Mandakini Madam was telling, uh, these are the practical difficulties one should put forth the, our uh, 
rather law making authority because they are, these are the people who make the law who enact the law but they don't know practical difficult because it is implementation is very difficult so i think uh, foxy make ma madam wonderful lecture i was telling madam has given comprehensive lecture on she has stressed all the parts of the art law but madam there are certain practical difficulties like in a city like mumbai kolkata madras it is very difficult if implementation part is concerned because thane like city or a corner of that particular uh, region how one art clinic owner can approach to that health officer municipal officer if any advice has to be sought any correction uh, in the reporting to be made whatever uh, practical difficulty i think eight minute ha huh? yeah, don't don't line it all so this is a sorry for the total collapse hai. lights are not there now so surrogacy act is a very much uh, part of our art and surrogacy and there is a uh, uh, clear cut uh, uh, prohibitions like prohibition on gay couple foreign nationals and functions are same as a uh, grant suspend uh, you know cancel registration enforce the uh, uh, standards and the in which to investigate the complaints and they have given all the details who can be surrogate and uh, you know everything all the details are given in this i'm just short. so in conclusion i like to say that art technology need the need is the need of the hour to safeguard the interest of the infertility couples as well as the patient donors and all and more moreover it will be help in the proper supervision accreditation licensing regulation smooth functioning of art clinics and all and uh, thank you very much and i think again a sincere request for all of you after 2 3 days we have the elections so please vote for me and you know make me the uh, president foxy thank you very much uh, now uh, now kalka uh, now yeah madam <laughs> yes sir thank you madam uh, actually we thought whether you could be this will be able to join or not and wonderful lecture already you have covered all the things so no need to do extra comment only practical difficulties i what i see is that implementation will be problematic for a health officer sitting in the corner of the city like new city like bombay kolkata madras mm -hmm. and secondly private practitioners will be having some problem because they have to approach every time to the health officer in yeah. our city we approach uh, hardly half an hour or one hour at the most but in cities like kolkata madras and pune yeah. mumbai it's very difficult so whenever there is any issue the doctor has to go to uh, that particular center or uh, health officer and such a long time it's very difficult to control i think so and there are many alka, provisions alka. actually if we one violates the provision like hmm. punishment is there yeah yes madam so Finish. punishment i want to, uh, no, no, I, want to actually, i want to actually comment on your first part of the question can i just comment on that yes, actually as soon as i see saw the gr i was very much surprised because i was implementing authority of pcp entity so many years so when i was sitting in mantralay with the madam uh, additional chief secretary when we were appointing the uh, appropriate authority in the act that time when madam asked me anadani madam was there principal secretary mandagini what do you say who should be appoint the appropriate authority so i told her that in big city like bombay we have ward we have ward like we have 26 ward and each ward is having 200 gynecologist you know 200 center so it is better to give the power to the moh who, of that particular ward that is how in mumbai we have 26 authority in mumbai similarly in in nasik or so many places district civil surgeon and also the at many corporation there is a moh of that corporation is given so this is a proper thing as far as the mtp also concern and even, even at the pcp entity but this art uh, they have made only civil surgeon of thane so i brought it to the notice of authority as it sir it is not possible because Ma mumbai is full of art clinics then the authority is sitting thane will not do the justice so i think your concern is already taken care of and we have already informed the authority that much i can comment only yeah sir it's very important because foxy should go ahead means in the sense you are there and many foxians are there in mumbai so mm -hmm. we can appeal to the government that this is very uh, practical difficulty and mm -hmm. if, if you, at all you want uh, complete regularization of the art clinics controlling of the clinics then this problem should be solved at priority wise okay. and uh, again there are rules and provisions i think uh, one has to keep in touch with the law because uh, right is mistake there can be legal punishment and punishments are very difficult to tolerate 
when the person ART speci specialist is practicing ART, such a high five procedure that takes lakhs of amount from the patient. So thank you, Monica. Thank you, Mandakini, Madam, for giving me opportunity. And once again, best wishes to you, Madam, for your Foxy President elections. And again, I seek your blessings and support from all of you who have joined today. I am also going for Chairperson Foxy Ethics and Medical Legal Committee. Please vote for me. I am there. Uh, next call, uh, next, uh, whenever you call me, I am next for your phone call. I will attend your phone call 100% sure. Thank you, madam. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Monica, ma Monica, please take over. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am, for chairing the session and Dr. Mandakini. Ma'am, your talk was extensive as always. Mm -hmm. uh, we now uh, welcome our next chairperson, Dr. Jyoti Banglawala, ma'am. She has 26 years of experience and has been the vice president of the Indore OBGY Society. She is a, sec a past secretary of the Indore uh, Society in the last year. She has been interested in ethics and medical legal issues of, of, in OBGY since the last 12 years an executive body member of IEAC for the year 2019-21, also an executive body member of study of female breast committee and practical obstetric committee. She has been the IMA representative for the MTP committee Indore, a treasurer at AICOG 22 Indore, the coordinator for the medical legal workshop at the AICOG 22, and the editor of the IOGS Connect, the treasurer of IOGS, and she has been a recipient of prestigious Wonder Foxy Award, the recipient of the Indoor IMA Corona Warrior Award by the MP government, the recipient of Nari Shakti and IMA Indoor branch. We welcome you, ma'am, to chair this session. A talk by Dr. Mm -hmm. MC Patel, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, Monica. And at the outset, I want to give thanks to our respected Mandakini Meg Madam for giving me this opportunity. And this is my proud privilege to introduce Dr. MC Patel sir, who has been the mentor of many of these uh, presenting in this platform. Uh, I'm seeing all the big shots of the medical legal and uh, I pay my respect to Mandakini Madam and Neeraj Nagpal Madam. And uh, Neeraj Nagpal, sir, you are so kind with me with, uh, in the visit to the Solapur and you taught me many things. And uh, for MC Patel, sir, the words fell short when I uh, say something about MC Patel, sir. He went to every nook and corner of the all the Foxy societies in India and always a phone call away, whether it is night or day. And always ready to help each and every Foxians. And he is conducting his happy learning webinar and with one webinar in each week. And he is going to the, all the Foxy societies and every person I'm seeing how much fun following he is. 10,000 miss. When I see the participant in the webinars, when I see the question in the webinar, I'm so I ad admire you, sir. And uh, this is a, just a brief intro, sir. Uh, actually, this is just a formal intro. He is the consultant obstetrician and gynecologist and medical legal counselor. He has been the vice president of Foxy in 2018, organizing secretary in AICOG 2017 in Ahmedabad, chairperson of ethics and medical legal committee Foxy in 2011 to 13, honorary joint secretary state organization of gynecologist and obstetrician of Gujarat in 2019 to 22, honorary secretary state organization of gynecologist and obstetrician of Gujarat in 22 to 24, organizing chairperson of MMCON in 2018, honorary member National Inspection and Monitoring Committee, PCP and GT Government of India in 2015, honorary member state supervisory board, PCP and GT Committee, Gujarat State in 2005 to 9. Resident of the Ahmedabad Obstetric Society in 2010 to 11, honorary member of National Managing Body, Indian Red Cross Society, headquartered 2019 to 22, national president, National Medicals Organization in 2016 to 18, president of IMA Ahmedabad branch in 2007 to 8, honorary surgeon, Indian Red Cross Eye Bank, and he has collected more than 1,000 eye pairs. Organizing chairperson of Vivekan and Enmukan in 2013, and he is the uh, he's, he's having the president of Lions Club, Ghatoldia, Ahmedabad in 1997 to 98. We welcome you, MC Patil sir, for your talk in the ART. Uh, welcome you, sir. Thank you, <coughs> Dr. Jyoti, for kind words. Let me share my screen. Is it seen full screen? No, sir. No, no. No? No, sir. Yes. No, no. no, no sir. In my, my... No, it is full screen, sir. 
No, it is full screen, yes. Fine. So, greetings from Statue of Unity, tallest statue of world, and we all are proud of that statue. ART, what constitutes negligence or which are the situations where it may end up into litigation as far as ART practice is concerned is topic for today's discussion. Warm welcome all the delegates and wishing you a litigation free practice. At the outset, I, I would like to thank organizers and Dr. Mandakini Meg in particular for inviting me to share my views about the subject. And I also extend my uh, all the wish to Dr. Mandakini Meg Madam for her endeavor as far as proxy election is concerned. So all the best Mandakini Madam for the same. Usually I start any of my talk with this question, is it worth discussing? Yes, and if it is yes, then why? Because medical litigations are increasing in number constantly and steadily, and unluckily we gynecologists rank first as far as litigation part is concerned. And which are the ingredients of negligence? What is negligence? We should understand <coughs> uh, uh, ingredients of negligence to constitute negligence against any doctor any service provided, which are the criteria? Existence of legal duty. As soon as you accept any patient to treat, your legal duty starts from that point of time. So it is existence of your legal duty. Because whenever you accept any patient, it becomes a contract or implied contract between patient and yourself. You are offering your professional services and patient pays for that or patient promises to pay for that. So legal duty stems from acceptance of duty in a legal way. Breach of that duty. So breach of that duty due to lack of uh, care or uh, inadequate care, care or so. So breach of that duty. Damage suffered by patient due to lack of duty, breach of duty. If patient suffers any damage, then it becomes one more ingredients as far as negligence is concerned. And very important ingredients to constitute negligence, doctor's conduct is the direct and proximate cause of such damage. So if action of doctor is direct and proximate cause to cause any damage to the patient, then it becomes negligence. So with this background, let us see which are the situation where we may end up into litigation or common allegations as far as ART practice is concerned. Delayed in diagnosis, investigation, or treatment. Missed diagnosis, investigation, or treatment. Wrong diagnosis, unnecessary investigation. Because we know as far as ART treatment is concerned, lots of investigation one has to go through. And it could be common allegation on part of patient when they do not get expected result and they go with this allegation also, there were so many unnecessary investigation. No proper consent, no proper counseling, and no proper consent could be one more area. Staff not qualified, infrastructure issues, emergency services not provided well in time, communication failure, so patient or patient party, they were not communicated proper, there was no counseling proper, Delayed in transfer, if at all for any reason, if you have transfer patient to higher center for further treatment in any, any complication or any emergency, then this could be also one more area as far as litigation is concerned. Complications. Complication related to ART treatment could be one more area. Say, for example, OHSS, multiple gestation, fetal uh, complication related to fetal reduction, possibility of infection, possibility of hemorrhage, injury to surrounding structure at the time of any procedure, or at the time of, say, for example, uh, if uh, she is advised for diagnostic laparoscopy or some uh, surgery for enhancing uh, fertility, then in, in this type of situation, if at all injury to surrounding structure, then it could be also one area as far as litigation is concerned. Morbidity, maternal and fetal, and or fetal, very rare condition, if at all it goes with mortality, then maternal and or fetal mortality could also be one area. Overcharging, we know this is expensive treatment against unexpected result because as far as success rate is concerned, 
still it is limited success rate. So this could also be uh, one more allegation, tremendous expense against unexpected region and ask for medical record and if you have not provided. So <clears throat> as per Medical Council of India, OLS guideline, we are under obligation to provide record within 72 hours and with newer guideline from NMC, within five working days, we are under obligation to provide record of treatment given to the patient or eligible relative of patient. Failure of patient to comply with schedule follow. Many a time patient doesn't comply and patient doesn't go for a follow up, but this becomes a good defense in your favor if you can prove it. Because whenever patient doesn't follow your instruction, it becomes a contributory negligence on part of patient and it becomes a uh, good defense in your favor. So in all this situation, you have to answer this very question in court of law. Not anticipated or not prepared to manage any complication related to ART treatment, very important question is asked, was it preventable? And usually you cannot say. And if it is yes, then one more question you have to answer. What did you do to prevent it? So did you take all the measures to prevent any complication related to your treatment plan? Why you couldn't prevent it? In spite of your care and caution, if you couldn't prevent, then this question will you have to answer. And did you diagnose in time, if at all any complications happened during your procedure, did you diagnose that complication well in time? And very important question, did you manage way in which any prudent doctor would have managed? So if you have managed any case, way in which any prudent doctor would have managed in that very given situation, then you could be out of problem. Let us see a few of the case scenario related to ART treatment. In this case, it was advertisement in camp, no result, no money. <clears throat> and this patient approached this hospital I mean clinic, ART clinic. She was investigated, treatment was started, rupees 90,000 were collected, but later on told that endometrium is not good. So we are not going to go for endometrial transfer, I mean embryo transfer and they cancel the cycle. So uh, in this particular case, uh, a clinic deducted some amount at the time of uh, refunding the amount. So patient told, that you tell no result, no money. So you will have to give me full refund. But clinic didn't pay, so case was filed. And at the time of awarding judgment, uh, it was very clear inference on part of a court, though the center must have incurred cost in stimulation and pickup, but since it was promised, it has to be refunded. So if you have promised like this, you are under obligation to fulfill the condition. Let us see a few of the situation. Many a time this type of advertisement on part of so many clinics we see. If first cycle fails, second cycle will be free. So is it ethical as per NMC? Can NMC suspend license merely on this ground? If is any legal issue, can one give guarantee is the question. One cannot give guarantee as far as the result is concerned. We know because there are limited chances or very uh, limited chances as far as result related to few of the ART procedures are concerned. So one cannot give guarantee about result. Yes, one can give guarantee about his or her best efforts, but he cannot give guarantee. Yes, he can give guarantee for money back also. So if there is no result, I will give all the money back. But in this situation, Clinic is under obligation to refund all the amount collected from the patient. <clears throat> Let us see one more situation. Are yaar paise to gonadotrophin mein jada hai. An IVF consultant sell gonadotrophin for profit margin to the patient. This is common allegation in few of the cases. Is it allowed under pretext that I am using for my patients only? So can any clinic give medicine from clinic only to their patient. So as per use versus sell and as per drug controller's guideline. So doctor can legally dispense. So it is not selling, 
but it is dispensing. So one can dispense to his own patient as far as any treatment part is concerned. But it is only to patient or he can dispense uh, to other doctors also. As per schedule C, biological and special products, uh, they can give to the patient and to others doctor also. But he cannot open shop or cannot import drugs. If at all he wants to, then he will have to go for separate license from drug authority and have to keep record. If at all he is dispensing to his patient and for that there is prescribed register that is register K. In that register, everything is given in the column. Say for example, quantity of purchase of that very medicine, expiry date. <coughs> Then to uh, whom this medicine was used, in which patient rather. So uh, this is also to be mentioned. In how much quantity this medicine uh, were used for the patient. So in th th this way, whole register is to be maintained as far as uh, drugs related to ART treatments are concerned. Let us see one uh, interesting situation. In this situation, ICSI with sperm derived from testicular biopsy for a couple with male factor, uh, he was uh, having azospermia, and female factor, she was a, a, a case of PCOs uh, with multiple fi fibrils. So in this, ICSI was decided, and two trials were failed. Ultimately, they were succeeded in third trial. Progeneva and natural progesterone were prescribed for the support, but in this case, this patient suffered pulmonary embolism. And there was allegation on part of patient that we were advised complete bed rest. And of course, it was denied by doctor also in court of law. And in this case, ultimately pulmonary embolism happened. So in this type of situation, we should be very clear at the time of counseling the patient, even for rest, if at all we have advised rest, then also we have to explain about the possibility of this type of situation as far as pulmonary embolism or any thromb thromboembolic phenomena is concerned. Let us see one more interesting situation. ART done and donor gametes used. Is it adultery? If, if in ART practice, if donor gametes are used, then it is not adultery. So no, if consent of partner is taken, because prior consent in this situation is very much required. Artificial insemination with donor without husband's consent, can it be ground for divorce or judicial separation? Yes, because it is very clear as far as any treatment protocol of ART is concerned, all the party involved, they should give consent. So even if you are going to go for AID, then consent of husband is very much required. And if consent of husband is not taken, then patient as well as clinic, both could be in danger as far as litigation part is concerned. Artificial insemination with husband. And if pregnancy happened, then husband never had an intercourse. In, in one of the case, it was happened. Husband had a never intercourse willfully or because of impotency. And this uh, preg uh, pregnancy was caused by testicular biopsy and testicular sperm extraction, rather, not biopsy, extraction, and pregnancy happened. And in this case, uh, the question was is it considered as a consummation of marriage? There was no intercourse. So this question was asked. And can decree of nullity be granted in favor of wife for divorce under impotency? So in this type of situation, it is not consummated and decree of nullity is possible in this type of situation. Under Indian Evidence Act, child born within 280 days of dissolution of marriage, that child is considered legitimate. But there is exception. If stored sperms are used or husband only, then this action, I mean section will not apply. Let us see one more interesting situation. What happens if DNA of baby doesn't match with genetic 
parents because in few of the situation it may occur and there could be allegation on part of uh, a patient party that it was a lib a lab mix up so what happened in this type of situation dna of surrogate baby doesn't match with genetic parents is the intended parent still bound to accept custody of baby so there are so many questions in this type of situation that is mixing of sample so we should be very careful in this type of situation and it happens when there are similar name of the patient or there are lots of work on the same day so we should be very careful in this type of situation not to end up into mix up so now better system of barcode uh, system is available the same barcode sticker will be on the file of patient and same barcode number or sticker will be on the sample which is preserved for that very patient and if those barcode match then only that sample will be open for use so if you go like this and it shows your utmost care not to end up into this type of situation if you can prove in court of law this is also one more uh, situation or uh, situ um, uh, incident death of an egg donor what is the medical legal scenario because in this type of situation there are so many questions are uh, asked in the court of law whether that uh, donor egg donor was eligible for egg donation was she screened for uh, egg donation program was she investigated properly as per as all the uh, std and other uh, venereal disease are concerned and other investigation to make a decision whether she was fit for ovum do donation program so in occurrence of death of egg donor there are so many issues issues uh, uh, to be uh, uh, discussed and one has to face what is the role of art bank in such situation just i mentioned art bank is under obligation for proper selection of egg donor with all the requisites which are given in art act in rules and regulations also how to screen how to investigate patient and how to subject their patient for egg donation to the art clinic is it legally correct if wife without husband's knowledge request for egg donation no because just i mentioned all the party involved in art program is a concern should be taken so in this situation when patient is married uh, signature of patient or consent of uh, husband is very much required is it legally correct to use donor sperm with only husband's consent without wife's knowledge or vice versa so uh, just i have mentioned consent of both the party is very much required let us see very interesting situation with irt program embryo is developed but before transfer before embryo transfer very tricky situation death of husband can wife use this embryo this is of course it is very rare condition but if at all it happens then at the time of taking consent if she has very specifically mentioned that in case of unforeseen condition in occurrence of my death a uh, 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 husband has given like this i give my full uh, consent uh, that embryo to be used by my wife so if this type of consent is taken then wife can use that embryo uh, as per as art program is concerned this uh, 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 the same way if at all death of wife then one more issue can husband use in her friend or in second wife again the answer is the same at the time of counseling and taking consent if same type of consent given by wife then this can be uh, uh, this, this is possible death of both very tricky situation embryo develop but death of both husband and wife can father of husband claim embryo and same way can father of wife claim embryo so same situation at the time of taking consent if it is clearly mentioned accordingly then they can claim otherwise this embryo uh, uh, cannot be used in any other art program they are allowed to perish 
or if consent is already given by that couple, then only those embryo can be utilized for research purpose also. Let us see one more situation. In this case, it is real happened case in South India very recently and very recently a judgment came. The so couple, uh, Ugandar and Ekta, after marriage life of 12 years, they had no child and they approached this clinic because there was advertisement by this clinic uh, about this uh, ART uh, treatment, all the procedures. So this couple approached this clinic and they suggested them to go for surrogacy and couple agreed to pay 15 lakhs rupees to the fertility center as service as service charge to the doctors in fifth month of surrogate mother's pregnancy. So condition was some amount in advance and rest of the amount to be paid at 20 weeks of the pregnancy with surrogate mother. They paid 2 lakhs in September 2019 and final payment in May 2020. But surrogate mother was not shown to them as promised. Even not a single uh, uh, meeting with that intending couple with surrogate couple. They were told that surrogate mother will go give birth to the baby in August 2020 and then they will hand over baby to you. But in this uh, very uh, case, what happened? In July 2020, the, both the doctors from that very clinic were arrested by police of uh, uh, Visagapatnam with six other persons for the charge of cha child, uh, child trafficking uh, issue. So in this type of situation, never entertain this type of practice in ART clinic because this is very serious matter and both of them were taken into custody but they could manage for uh, bail and uh, their hospital was also again open, which was were, which were closed. But in this situation, when they were out of court, this couple approached them to pay their money back. But for one reason or other, they didn't pay. And ultimately, this couple preferred uh, application or uh, uh, in CPA because they were consumer of that hospital and they, and they preferred appeal in district forum. So in this judgment came that all the amount, total amount, rupees 15 lakhs to be returned to the couple and compensation of rupees 1 lakhs and legal expenses of rupees 10 lakhs to be awarded to the couple. So with this very clear cut carry home message, always insist to go for ethical practice only never indulge in this type of wrong or unethical practice. Let us see one more very interesting situation happen in South India only. Girls visit ART bank with her mother to volunteer for OM donation. She was investigated and she, uh, she was confirmed with Aadhaar card that she is major and OM donation program was decided. She was screened for, for the same and all the reports were normal. She was subjected for OM donation. After some time, police visit, visited that hospital and said that she was minor. And we know minor cannot involve in OM donation program. So serious matter was there. And uh, there was a, 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 a case filed against that doctor because minor cannot be subjected for OM donation. And that Aadhaar card was fake. It was unlucky on part of that clinic because clinic had asked Aadhaar card. They provided Aadhaar card, but it was fake Aadhaar card. So case was filed against clinic and doctors. Health minister ordered to close all the clinic involved in this program. So clinics were uh, closed. They preferred a writ petition in a, a court and it was granted and a court admitted petition, stay was granted, and now clinics are open. Now one issue happened, because as far as ART clinic to be registered, so as this ART bill came, I mean act uh, uh, came into existence, this clinic applied for registration. But as there was court case pending, ART authority was not visiting, 
for inspection as far as registration party consent. Of course, hospital is open because there is stay on the order. So they are doing practice very well. So uh, they both uh, approached me in one of the conference uh, in Osur. Uh, they uh, told me, doctor, what we should do? I mean, nothing. You enjoy your practice because this order is stay. Your hospital is open and you are uh, uh, eligible to go for practice. So nothing to worry. But as far as their, their case is concerned, as far as this fake Aadhaar card is concerned, so with this, what is the carry home message? Even if you ask for Aadhaar card, verify eligibility of Aadhaar card also because you may end up into this type of problem in any of the situation. So with ART Act, hospital applied for registration just I mentioned. So uh, this is the very interesting situation. So as far as who and sperm donation part is concerned, there are certain point, points you have to go with. Any woman age more than 23 years and less than 35 years can enter in the OM donation program. But irrespective of her marital status, even uh, unmarried girl can also subject her for this program, but she should be more than 23 and less than 35 years of age. And or history of pregnancy. It is not necessary that she should have pregnancy in past or she should have any uh, 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 issue. So and or motherhood, proven fertility is not mandatory by said act, but preferred clinically. Clinically, we can ask for whether it is not mandatory legally can become ovum donor, free from STDs and genetic diseases, and she should be medically fit. Not only medically, but mentally also she should be fit as far as OM donation program is concerned. So we should be very careful as far as all these points are concerned. Bank shall not supply sperm or OM of a single donor to more than one commissioning couple. It is very clear. An oocyte donor, uh, donor shall donate oocyte only once in her life and not more than seven oocytes shall be retrieved from oocyte donor. So this is uh, one section in ART Act. They should be free from STD and genetic disease I have already mentioned. So we should be very clear as far as this type of situations are concerned. So let us see a few of the points or explanation about oocyte and sperm donor. ART bank can supply donated sperm of a particular sperm donor only once to a particular ART clinic, either level one clinic or level two clinic for particular patient. But nowhere in this act, it is mentioned whether male can donate only once in life. So there could be interpretation or possibility of interpretation in such way that one sperm donor sample may be supplied to a single clinic for single patient and for as many times as required if pregnancy doesn't take place to that particular couple. If that couple wants to use that sperm donor sample only but can be supplied to other AIT clinic for other couple also. So law is a jugglery of words and interpretation, how you interpret any law, any act, any regulation or any rules and you can do it favor to your uh, uh, clinic. <clears throat> there, is, there are some uh, important issues. Can an egg donor bank supply egg donor to clinics located in different district? Say for example, ART Bank is in District A. Can they supply in District B? So in this, yes, because in ART clinic, there is no ART Act, there is no specification. So if the uh, 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 donor is eligible, then they can supply to other district also. Can woman unrelated to commissioning couple be a surrogate mother because again, this was the issue because previously it was mentioned that she should be close related. Now word close is removed. And now one more uh, 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 word has come. 
interested uh, couple can indulge in this program. But there are some uh, 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 provision for that also. We should uh, strictly go with that provisions also. Can an unmarried woman donate egg? Yes. Can an unmarried man donate sperm? Yes. Can an egg donor bank be run by an educational or charitable trust? So irrespective of their medical background, any person can run ART bank and ART clinic. But persons working in that ART bank or ART clinic, they should be uh, as per standard required by ART Act and ART law. Can an egg donor bank supply frozen eggs to clinic? No, because only ART uh, 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 in this type of situation, as far as owned, uh, egg donor program is concerned, they will supply egg donor to ART clinic and ART clinic will do all this procedure because it is very specifically mentioned as far as definition of ART bank is concerned. Organization responsible for collection of gametes, storage of gametes, embryos, and supply of sperm, semen, oocyte, oocyte donor, and surrogate mother to ART clinic and their uh, uh, patient. So it is clearly mentioned in this category only ART bank can function. Can egg donation bank stimulate egg donor and conduct egg retrieval procedure? No, because it is only given power to ART clinic. Can egg donor bank advertise for recruiting egg donor? Yes, for uh, sperm or for uh, ovum uh, donor, they can give advertisement. Can an egg donor bank collect semen sample from level one or level two clinic? Yes, because there is no specification in ART uh, egg there from where sample of semen can be collected. So uh, it can be collected. Can egg donor bank supply stimulated donor to level two clinic? No, because all this procedure or treatment protocol is to be decided by ART clinic only. So uh, 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 ART clinic only, yes. ART bank has uh, no power. So what to do? and how to prevent all this uh, situation. It is very much mandatory as far as registration of center is concerned. No ART clinic, bank or surrogacy clinic can function without registration. And so registration is very much required. Possibility of, uh, of any complications should be anticipated. That is foreseeability is expected from any ART clinic or bank as far as this uh, ART treatment protocol are concerned. So one should anticipate, say for example, there are possibility of OHSS uh, if a patient goes with higher stimulation. So you should anticipate and you should, should be readily available with all the intensive care uh, to deal with the situation accordingly. But proper counseling is very much important as far as any ART treatment plan is concerned and no rosy picture about result. No tall claim because we know in eye of law, when you claim to be master, you are supposed to be master. And we cannot give re, re, uh, guarantee as far as result is concerned. Even if you are sure of result like Aishwarya Rai, but it may turn like this at any time. So no tall claim, no rosy picture in ART practice. So proper communication, proper documentation is very much required because in this famous case of C. Jaipal Reddy versus Padmini Veluri, National Commission has very specifically mentioned that consent is not mere piece of paper where patient or patient party has to sign, but it is a very important document of your counseling or of your communication. Whatever you have counseled to the patient, each and every point should be mentioned in that consent paper and then patient or patient party has to sign. And once patient signs that document, it becomes a documentation of your communication. And when you when you give all those, I think it is hang. I think it slide are, slides are not moving, but 
whenever you offer all those record in court of law, it becomes a communication of your documentation. So it is very clear as far as uh, uh, all this uh, issues related to ART treatment is concerned, we should be very careful as far as not to end up into this type of uh, situation. I think slides are not moving. But to uh, conclude my talk, we should be very careful as far as ART treatment is concerned. We have to strictly follow all the provisions of ART, clinic, uh, ART Act is concerned and standard protocols and proper counseling, proper documentation and in need of time, involvement of any of our professional colleagues. It shows your concern to take utmost care of your patient in any given situation. So to conclude uh, my talk with thanks to Dr. Mandakini Meg again and wishing you all the best, uh, Dr. Mandakini Meg, for your future endeavor. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, if any person. question, if any okay. query, I'll okay. be happy to can answer I, can I comment, uh, time and chair person? persons for me. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, uh, ma I think uh, MC, when you said that I'm going to take other part of the ERT, I was more than happy. And you did justice to the subject like anything. So I didn't touch all the uh, yeah. ART, uh, X, no, etc. Yeah. Because you have right. touched it. So yeah. my interest was to discuss this type and of case is a real thing. happened situation. Yeah. These In are real happened situation with few of our uh, uh, Foxian right. friends. Like, and the in-depth, like, you know, uh, divorce, you know, the ground up divorce. And other other marital uh, complications. Yes. I think it was wonderful. Now, Jyoti, please. Go ahead and give your yes, comment. Sir covered, sir covered each and everything and I just, I am just sum up in the three C's actually, the counseling, communication and consent and the document everything and no false promises. Actually, the in IVF centers, big money is involved and patient is having, uh, it's a very ho hopeful patient is coming with three, four center visited and then he, uh, patient couple, uh, the couple comes to us. So when we make a false promise without uh, seeing the result of the another center, then the when we give, we give the false promise and taking the money. So better to document each and everything. And uh, as sir said, and sir is also knowing about that uh, chemotherapy patient, when the such type of patient comes to us, but better to take consent for the means if the death happens to wife or husband or unmarried son or unmarried daughter, then the use of eggs or means use of ovum and sperms or embryo, it should be very clear in the first visit only when the some sort of chemotherapy is going on or a patient is uh, means the couple is on war front. There are some couple who are coming, the military people, RB people, they are also coming to us. So every everything should be written properly. If something bad happened to the one of the couple, means the one person in the couple, so the embryo can be used. So the proper documentation is a very must thing to do. So in ART Act, it is very specifically mentioned at each and every stage of your treatment, you have to go for consent. Yes. For example, uh, when you are going for stimulation, then consent. Then retrieval of OM, consent. Then transferring mm -hmm. embryo, uh, consent. And as you very uh, nicely mentioned, yeah. in case of any patient having uh, chemotherapy, we can uh, go for uh, 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 stimulation and retrieval of OM yeah, and no. preservation. preservation yes, but, no, but, but, but yes, but prior consent in for the, in this regard is also very much uh, required. And at the time of taking consent, they should give consent that in future they give all the authority to use this uh, gamut to whom for themselves or for, for any other person. It should be very clear at the time of taking consent in this type of situation. We are also facing problems, sir, when couple is coming to us. And previously, we, means the, uh, the couple was having one baby and the embryo was with us. And then that part, the, that man was posted in the um, Jammu Kashmir border. Uh, at a particular time, we have not taken the consent for the uh, future uses of this. And uh, he is uske demise ke baad now wife is so much in trouble. But nowadays, law, uska embryo use. The act is very clear. Yes, yes. Very good.
Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. And thank you very much, Ma Mantakini Madam, for giving us opportunity. And I request you all to just please support my candidature in Ethics and Medical Legal Committee this year. I'm going for the chairperson. I I make sure that I will create awareness in our Foxy societies about this medical legal issues. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Jyoti Ma'am. And thank you, Patel, sir, for an excellent talk, sir. Yes. Make madam, uh, you are not audible. No, no, I was just welcoming Dr. Kumtekar. I just saw him. Yes. Kumtekar sir is uh, very much there since the beginning of the talk, actually. Yes. 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 Good morning, everybody. Good morning from I USA. I am coming at this evening in India. Irish. Irish. You, you, you have, I think you have joined with Common Faculty Link, so you rename. <laughs> Hi. Because it is with faculty only. Your, your uh, photo is seen. <laughs> so, uh, Mandakini, madam, be after power cut when she came, that time only Kumtekar sir also came. That time, also. <laughs> hey, Bombay, it is very, very, it's so raining. I was fortunate to uh, share dais with Mandakini, madam, on ART Act when the amendment came, and I was so novice and I am not knowing anything. That day, the day Mandakini, madam, sat with me and uh, she tried to teach me ART Act and amendments. Thank you, thank you very much, madam. Thank you. Go, go, go. Yes, sir. Monica, please take over. Monica? Hmm. Monica is also muted. Uh, she is hey, muted or she yeah. lost connection? Let us please move forward for the next. Hmm. Hello? Uh, yes, Monica. Uh, am I audible? Yes, yes Monica. Uh, audible. Let us now move forward for the next academic part that is the panel discussion. I welcome the moderators, Dr. Suyoga Panat, Madam. She's a consultant obstetrician and gynecologist with a fellowship in advanced infertility. She has been a recipient of the Signature International Award, the Shailaja Chaudhary Award, the late Mrs. Tripti Umranikar Award for standing first in Pune University. She has worked in a government setup for the last 12 years and is the member of the advisory board of PCP Entity Committee at Amravati and has been the past president of Amravati OBJ by Society and the past treasurer of PRISM conference, that is the Amok Zonal Conference. We welcome you, ma'am. Yes. Thank you, moderator, for the kind words. Our next moderator is Dr. Sudesh Doshi, sir. Uh, sir, can we have the slide? Mm -hmm. Sir yes. is a senior obstetrician and a medical legal consultant working at Pandarpur since the last 25 years. He has an experience of delivering more than 15,000 babies as his private nursing home. He was the chairperson of the Adolescent Health Committee in 2016 to 18 and the Medical Legal Committee from 20 to 22 from AMOX. He is also a member of the National uh, PCP Entity Committee, the past president of Pandarpur OBGY Society, the vice president of EMLIA, Maharashtra chapter, and the member of EMLC Foxy. We welcome you, sir. Hello, Sudesh. So uh, Hello, ma'am. <laughs> Dr. Sudesh, oh. I need to be good for this panel. Amit sir, can we have the slides please first? Our expert for this panel discussion is Dr. Rekha Rajendra Kumar, ma'am. She's a gynecologist and an IVF uh, specialist holding a diploma in human resource development and hospital management and administration. She had the first rank in MD University examination and she was the topper in ICOG reproductive medicine examination. She is currently the chairperson of the Medical Legal uh, Committee of Kasoga. She is also the South Zone Coordinator for Foxy Infertility Committee, a chairperson of the Infertility and ERT Committee from the year 20 to 23, and the Ethics and Medical Legal Committee for this current year 23 to 25. We welcome you, ma'am. Our panelists for today's panel discussion are as follows. The next slide, please. Dr. Girish Kumtekar, sir, uh, he is in professional practice since last 31 years and in medical legal practice since the last 20 years. He uh, is the partner in the state uh, ART center in Solapur in the last 15 years and he owns his own private maternity hospital in the city of Solapur. Solapur, uh, sir, is the only person we turn to when we have any medical legal problems. We welcome you, sir. He uh, is an active Rotarian also. Thank you, Monica. The next slide, please. Thank you, Dr. Dr. Monica. Dr. Sir uh, is, has, is a postgraduate from GS Medical College and is a practicing gynecologist with special interest in endoscopy and laparoscopy. 
He is also the joint director at Omsai Multi Speciality Hospital, has been the vice president of Navi Mumbai OBGY Society, the West Zone coordinator for Ethics and Medical Legal Committee, Foxy, is a passionate finance teacher and a marathon runner. Okay. We welcome you, sir. Our next panelist is Dr. Swarupa Ayer, ma'am. She's a consultant and a fertility specialist with a medical legal advisor, the secretary of KUGS, member of the EMLC Foxy, practicing since last 25 years, and she's also a peer reviewer of the Journal of OBG by India. We welcome you, ma'am. Our next panelist is Dr. Saili Jagirdar, madam. She's an associate professor at PDMC Amravati. The member of Foxy IMA and ISOPAPS uh, Associations, the clinical secretary of Amravati OBGY Society, the scientific chairperson of IMA in 2016, the scientific co chair at various conferences. She has received the late Shailaja Chaudhary Award for the Excellence in the year 2018. She also has many publications to her name. Her special interests include critical care obstetrics and high risk pregnancy. We welcome you, ma'am. Our next panelist is Dr. Manju Rathi, ma'am. She is from Rajasthan. She is a social worker, writer, and a blogger. She has a special work in adolescent. Then, uh, and the last, uh, yeah. She's also the founder president of the NGO Sakhi Saheri, the vice president of the Indian Medical Association Rajasthan branch, honorary secretary of IME Kisangar, founder member of UPHR, the secretary of SOPCER, and the legal advisor at Clients Protection Law Firm, NGO Seva and IMA Rajasthan. We welcome you, ma'am. Our next panelist is Dr. Bharti Rajshikar, madam. She is the medical director and consultant at Sayadri Multi Speciality Hospital. She is a past honorary secretary of Kasoga and the president elect of Kasoga uh, in the year 23 24. She has been the IMA state vice president and the pres past president of the Hassan OBGY Society. She's an active member of the Hassan PCP NDT committee too. She has worked in for various committees of Foxy, including the Food, Medical Equipment and Drug Committee, the Preventive Oncology, and she's currently the South Zone Coordinator of the Public Awareness Committee. She's a master trainer in Foxy DIRA programs and the RSE programs. We welcome you, ma'am. Our next panelist is Dr. Varsha Nahade, madam. She was the past president of the Nashik Obishwai Society the Zonal Coordinator at AMOX, the past Organizing Secretary of the Nashik OBGY Society, a National Faculty at Gistosis, and Director of Prayag Hospital, Nashik. We welcome you, ma'am. Our next panelist is uh, the next slide, please. Not this one, Kanchan ma'am slide is there. Ma'am, I spoke to Kanchan ma'am, there is a network issue, so she will not be able to join from Chiplun because it's raining very heavily. I request Suyoga ma'am and Sudesh Doshi sir to please take over the panel discussion now. Okay. Thank you, dear Monica. Uh, kindly allow me to share the screen. Yes, at the outset, I would like to thank the organizers for allowing us to be the moderators. And I would like to special mention here that uh, though me and Dr. Suyoga are the moderators, the whole credit for this panel goes to Dr. Suyoga. She has been taken huge efforts to uh, mm -hmm. procure the slides and form the questions. I'll be here just to moderate her. Uh, all the credit to Dr. Suyoga. No, sir, that's not the thing. <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay, we we'll start. So, we'll... One, minute, one minute, Suyoga, before you start. Yes, sir. I want to thank all the panelists, all the esteemed panelists, and I can see in the OT, so there is OT in the OT only. <laughs> and all of you taking <clears throat> taking time for this uh, particular webinar and being the faculty. Thank you very much from the bottom of my heart. Yes. Please. Thank you, ma'am. Yes. How to avoid litigations in, in obstetric practice? The medical profession is considered to be one of the most noble profession. And however, today the doctor-patient relationship has been skewed and it's diminishing. And the best way... I will log in from two devices because your voice is echoing. Okay, sir. Okay, okay. Log in from one device. Okay, sir. Okay. Come from only one, Dr. Sayaka. Yes, yes. 
so the best way to handle medico legal issues is to avoid them and how to avoid litigations in obstetric practice actually the topic is obstetric but we have also included one gynecological case also because it's important that's why so at the outset i would like to thank dr mandakini meg madam to allow me and dr sudesh doshi sir to moderate this session we have with us today all the stalwarts in the field of medico legal respected dr mc patel sir and dr gitendra sharma sir dr neeraj nagpal sir dr dilip parke sir dr ajay mane sir dr manish matsve sir and dr jyoti banglowala madam dr kuthe madam dr girish kumtekar sir and all the panelist today we have dr girish kumtekar sir dr santosh jai bhai dr swarupa iyer dr saili jahagirdar dr manju rathi dr bharti raj chekar dr varsha lahade and dr kanchan madar so i would like dr sudesh doshi sir to take over from here and uh, uh, as we said doctors have been uh, been treated as semi gods but still obstetricians face the highest number of litigations as we all know that the highest number of litigations in india are against radiologists and obstetricians we being very dear to them next slide please yes but the doctor patient relationship has been love and hate relationship for example when a patient comes to you registers with you she is pregnant they are all happy they are in love with you they are maybe showering flowers and everything all do and something goes wrong then the relationship goes into meter the meter may shift from red uh, from green to red at any time next please yes so doctor. suddenly when the doctor bhagwan ka dusra roop hota hai suddenly doctor shaitan ka roop ban jata hai and it takes no time for the doctor becoming bhagwan to shaitan and this can be not only because of medical problems but this can become because of administrative problems the hospital problems which may you may not have control over maybe because of political problems the local nagar sevak or anything can go wrong so we have to think of how to uh, avoid going all these things wrong that is how to avoid litigations so yes sir doctors are the most admired and most a uh, reputed persons in the society but a, every patient wants a fairy tale physician the doc the patient expects doctor to be intelligent cool calm respectable wise disciplined hard working punctual honest attentive one who never gets angry trustworthy sincere polite generous down to earth having an excellent memory and latest knowledge and be patient fr- friendly and he sagar of the atyanta mafak dara he sagra patients expectations asat and we have to satisfy the patient because this is how the patient satisfaction scores and it is mandatory there is a saying is too little honored in the healthcare because apan manto na purcha stage magta shana but medical case everything every case can be different and if we even commit one mistake then we may have no time to get back or get back into practice we may be punished very heavily for that in terms of law also in terms of your reputation also and in terms of patient also next bai pan bhare deva alas the burden of women hood jasa bai pan bhari ahe tasa tichcha treating obstetrician la sudha bhari pan face karava lagu shakta ani mhanunas obstetrics it tops the uh, cases in the consumer court and the, there are substantial increase in the number of litigations why first of all because of the use and misuse of vast information which is available on google rising expectations of the patients and relatives and the notion that money can buy anything and everything inclusion of medical services under the consumer protection act loss of general pub- faith of general public over the medical fraternity and lack of awareness regarding responsibilities of doctors in medico legal issues and the google doctor is consulted more than the physician over to you sir yeah i think we should uh, uh, skip the introduction slides and we should go to yes. the next slide yes next please yeah this is the first case this is a scenario Mrs ABC a 29 year old primary gravida with 35 weeks of pregnancy 
with preeclampsia she comes to the opd for emergency treatment patient is registered with three different obstetricians patient chaz over teen vegvega files hai she has complaints of headache nausea her blood pressure is 170 by 110 mm of mercury a doppler report is showing 32 weeks asymmetrical iugr with absent diastolic flow in the umbilical artery her hemoglobin is 9 gram percent platelet 1 lakh 10000 rest investigations were normal she is a close relative of the nagar sevak of your locality and is accompanied by 8 to 10 relatives she was advised emergency lcs elsewhere and patient has come for second opinion since she was in so what an delivery now what are your opinions regarding this case yes dr girish sir please what yes, is this patient yes i would like to talk about it but before even uh, before discussing this yoga you have brought in the most difficult case in obstetrics <laughs> the first as a first case okay fine that's good with us you everybody faces this situation but before i go into uh, options i would like to clarify all the audience that one thing uh, sudesh and swaga you started your slides with dr s m god now believe me this notion has to be removed first in our minds first yes sir. we are treated as gods we are not gods who are we we are human beings with a special knowledge to indulge and treat human body with our knowledge and skills that's it so keep your feet on the ground don't treat yourself as doctors secondly as far as this situation is considered one more option i was like always like to emphasize particularly on youngsters learn to say no find out your limitations find out limitations of your establishment find out your own limitations clinical limitations surgical limitations and treatment options and learn to say no so going ahead with the options first oh, option yes. admit and give vaginal trial okay oh, for this even before admitting and vaginal trial i would like to counsel this patient to a great extent and which we people lack a lot Uh, i'm going into a bit uh, elaboration because time is not a big concern in this nanangaga series i know 10 minutes and the bell is there and you have to stop or halfway so i take liberty to explain more so even before admit and give vaginal trial vaginal trial i have always been a fan of vaginal trial always but counseling is the most important now the scenario in which you have put the patient is a very very high risk patient she has already consulted two three doctors one gynecologist has given one opinion second second opinion third third opinion the patient is confused and google has added the confusion yes she wants a vaginal delivery she knows the risk of the vaginal delivery as well as she knows the risk of the cesarean section because first doctor might have advised straight away cesarean section second might have advised that i don't know if you opt for vaginal delivery god save you and he puts himself in the god's position and wants to give something and third doctor says something else so the patient is confused so counseling in this patient is most important you have to give or open all options spend 30 40 minutes i always insist in my lectures that you give time to the patient there is no point in seeing 80 patients in a day if you see eight patients in a day with proper counseling that is good good enough to save your yourself so counsel this patient give options to the patient if possible take a written consent of every option and its associated collateral damages or advantages and you have to spend a lot of time to be the patient admit later on and if you are want to give vaginal trial your establishment must be equipped with all button motor modern uh, uh, monitoring equipments and emergency is a cesarean section at the drop of the moment okay sir uh, yes second option is admit and convince for lss hey, dr well, santosh dr santosh what would you like to do for this uh yeah am i am i audible yes sir okay uh regarding this patient uh after analyzing the situation first thing which i could understand is that patient this patient particular patient has no faith, faith in a treating doctor that is the reason she has seen three doctors with same problem first thing second thing is she is not only a medically high risk 
she is a socially high risk patient socially high risk patient. okay second thing and third thing that is my principle that whenever any such patient comes to me for second opinion with opinion of a qualified gynecologist saying that this particular thing needs to be done i see to it that i do not contradict the previous doctor and give the same opinion which has been given by the previous doctor now it is patient's decision whether to go back to the previous doctor or remain with me most important thing since she is a very high risk more high risk socially than medically i will see to it that if i am working in a setup which is well equipped to manage this patient then only i will talk with the patient and i will see that patient gets admitted only if she is ready to follow my plan of action and not to my modify my plan of action depending on whims and fancies of the patient thank you sir for your input our third choice is agree with the opinion of previous gynecologist and that you have already conveyed and the fourth choice is politely refuse admission and refer to higher center anyone for this choice प्रेमाने सांगू शकतो आपण की दुसरीकडे जा किंवा प्रिवियस गायनेकोलॉजिस्टकडे यस डॉक्टर भारती यू वांट टू डू समथिंग डॉक्टर भारती अनम्यूट योरसेल्फ यस सर गुड इवनिंग यस सो एज आई टोटली अग्री विथ द प्रीवियस पॅनेलिस्ट ऑन व्हाटएवर ही सॉइड फर्स्ट इज बी अवेअर ऑफ ऑल द रिस्क्स दैट आर गोइंग टू बी देयर फॉर यू द सेकंड थिंग इज यस ट्राई टू ऑलवेज नॉट डिफर of course medically we know the situation 29 years severe pih iugr she is a woman who is ideal for a cesarean preferably with all the facilities available in the center so as dr santosh said if you are confident of managing the case you have all the facilities you take the proper um, out um, convince them and explain to them about the morbidity maternal and fetal morbidity and if we have the facilities let us keep them or we can always refer them to a higher center saying that the facilities in our setup may not be uh, feasible for her because she is prone for more complications i think that could also keep you litigation free especially if your center you are a single owner a single consultant with no proper backup i think it should be a very wise situation to refer her to a higher center can i add one more thing here as santosh has rightly said you do not contradict the previous consultant two consultants maybe but you can have your own different opinion of managing this case since there are a lot of options are available and that's why i told you that counseling give open all options you don't say that i disagree with the previous consultant but say that i well he has done it his own way but I, this is a different option and you must consult the patient patient as uh, santosh has already put it is a very high risk socially so it is always better to involve the family not alone patient husband and family also because you are by adding your own options you are adding to the confusion and uh, the patient may really be confused and lastly if you feel the patient must be referred to a higher center particularly if a higher center to which you are attached so the patient can uh, impose her, her or his family's confidence in the establishment as well as the doctor and second opinion jo manage this case case jointly try to involve the previous doctor also if is not your enemy there are no enemies in the medical field there are foes only but medical jousting should be avoided and you concur with the opinion of the previous consultant at the same time you put your foot down that is yes if you ask me this is what i will prefer absolutely sir yeah. uh, so yoga can i add yes uh, yes madam see i think we are talking only about mother right now but you i think mentioned 35 week pregnancy right so uh, the lot of emotional drama starts with the baby so in case we are planning to deliver this particular patient in a private setup where if at all the nicu facility is not available then we should take that factor right in the beginning into consideration and since all of uh, my previous faculties have said that transfer so this becomes a very valid reason for transfer if nicu is not mm-hmm. there in the same setup where you are delivering because that comes the first point 
if this facility was not available at your center why did you deliver here so and i anticipated that time yeah sali so, sali has any other opinion Uh, I right. I would rightly go with all of the panelists, and the way rightful that they have said that you get <clears throat> the this patient is a very socially high risk patient, medically plus socially high risk patient. So when you calculate the risk score of this patient, this patient, if at all you have got all the facilities of managing the mother as well as the baby, and also managing the whims and fancies of the patient, then only you need to admit such a patient at your setup. Otherwise, we need to politely refuse or. put them at such a place where that patient is comfortable the mother is comfortable and the patient agree to whatever you are going to say so yes. i would rather refer the to patient summarize, to summarize to summarize this case uh, yes i would say that counseling is at most important look at the limitations of your hospital your setup uh, if possible uh, shift her to a center which has taking care of both the mother and the baby and the care of the social nuisance also and lastly Uh, what Girish Kumtekar said, sir said, let's learn to say no if it is out of your bounds. Thank you. I think we should go to next question. Yes. Now, the as we have already seen now, ata dharma sankat kuthe. How can you refuse such a patient with severe preeclampsia, with headache, impending eclampsia, political pressure is high, relatives are known to you. relatives beg to you that you are the only one who, who is competent to save mother and baby who can afford your charges and you know you have confidently handled many such cases how can you refuse such patient so, i will i will try to start to finish in a few sentences yes sir usually when i counseling such patients i when i want to refer you to tertiary center to where i am also attached and i am going to manage the case if there are a lot of confidence in me and they believe in my experience i should go to a tertiary center where i can manage i will i will consult them well if you insist on my setup my setup has this limitations and i will be happy to do it because i get more, all the money I, which you pay i get it you might be paying extra in that institute but it is for the safety of the patient as well as the baby and here what you have to emphasize is rather than your skills your confidence your ego or everything you have to emphasize on the safety of the patient you have to tell the patient that if i go to that institutions all the facilities all the resources all the consultants all the investigations are avail available to me at the drop of the hat which is for the betterment of the patient and that is what i will prefer in spite of my skills my experience where i am satisfying my ego as well in front of the patients and their socially high risk relatives so that uh, it's a win win situation for both of us and that you have to convince the patient thank you sir uh, one word from mc patel sir uh, regarding uh, management of such patient who wants to deliver with you and i was uh... Uh, busy with one phone call so uh, can you tell me very briefly as per a situation yes sir, yes, sir. Uh, it's a very high risk patient uh, 35 weeks pre term impending eclampsia uh, headache then uh, the relatives are known to the political party some local uh, corporate has come they know to and they have come with uh, from three different doctors with three different opinions and now want to deliver at your place and you want to refuse the patient so what are the rights of doctors in such yes, case yes yes so if it is a cold patient you are at full liberty to choose whether to treat whether not to treat but if it is an emergency you have to stabilize patient and then you can refer to higher center if you are not well versed to deal with this type of patient at your hospital say for example you are working in a primary health center with very limited resources then you can very well refuse but not straight straight way refuse uh, without doing anything because the same case which happened in state of karnataka dr rekha is here in, in the state of karnataka same patient had been to primary health center and they say nothing can be done here patient was referred to bengaluru and our own foxy and dr prakash mehta uh, uh, took the charge of that patient patient was well managed patient was saved Uh, cesarean section was done baby was saved patient was saved they were discharged know. from the hospital but they lodge complaint against that primary health center doctor but without doing anything 
how you refer patient to higher center at least in this type of situation you can go with maxelf also so whenever you refer this type of patient to higher center uh, you have to give primary treatment as far as stabilization is concerned as yes. far as yes, political, will, political will, party or relative are concerned you can explain them so i am ready to treat this patient but we have very limited resources this is the, the, the situation and it may end up into anything it is always better to uh, take this patient to higher center for utmost care mm. you can manage sir, your escort you escort patient with uh, uh, i mean escort patient in the same ambulance with all the emergency drugs etc it shows your consent to uh, take utmost care of your patient and with proper explanation to political party or even known relative or uh, old patient uh, uh, relative who comes to us in uh, uh, our hospital with so many patients in past then also we can explain because merely that they are known to us uh, and we may uh, take charge of patient and ultimately we ended into a very big trouble and at that time it becomes very difficult to face the, the yes. same relative so they are known to you uh, for past um, uh, treatment of any of the relative of their patient so sir, may, uh, may i interrupt relative. a bit and uh, uh, tell you sir one disadvantage of such situation stabilize the patient yes. it all depends upon the uh, qualifications and experience of the doctor i agree yes. and it should be done there is no question but in case whatever you do at this during the stabilization of the patient and something wrong goes on the way yes ever the whole blame comes to you believe me mm-hmm. even if you are going to distill water injection for the patient the patients and relatives will blame that injection they don't know which injection you are giving for that mishap yes. so how so, to tackle so, this thing uh, uh, in this type of situation when you are stabilizing the patient quick counseling with the relative or whosoever brought the patient is very important this is the situation even if i do not do anything and refer patient to ir center it is all likely that anything may happen on the way of transfer i am trying to stabilize patient if at all something goes wrong please do not misunderstand me please do not blame me so if you have counsel like this then it could be easier one to face if at all something goes wrong Just to summarize, uh, what is sir, important is the communication. Sir. Communication part is very important. Yes, yes, Doctor Rekha. So this is very sorry. Yes. One minute interfe- interfering yes. in between okay. answering Doctor Girish's uh, question. Uh, I go along with Doctor M C Patel, sir, saying that one maintain the records. First of all, write everything like giving Maxell blood pressure was so much. Now the I have given this and all that. Record the blood pressure, everything at the time of transfer. Rec- make them hear the baby's heart sound, fetal heart sound with. The relatives explain everything, take consent, and also tell them that I am giving Maxell because the patient may throw a fit if I don't give the Maxell or whatever you want to give, nifedipine, whatever you want to give. Tell them that if I do not give, this is this may happen, and that is why I am giving this. And show all the ampules and show all the injections, whatever you are giving, with all the evidence, and then accompany with them to the uh, place so that you have covered everything. And uh, if you don't do that, if she throws a fit and thinking that. She She may we give something and then something happens. This is a better way than what Doctor Girish says. Thank you. Yes, yes, sir. Yes. This is a very tricky situation again because once uh, you are done all the everything documented, everything you have consulted, you done everything. But the second time the newspaper says that doctor gave a wrong injection and the patient died on the way. How to tackle that? <laughs> Yeah, but yeah. you are yeah. saying in the court yeah. of law, yeah. no, sir. When you have done everything and you have the evidence, proof court of evidence. Court of law is the very so uh, remote stage, madam. Yes, agreed. Social. Agreed. Social, so they that, will tell that, for everything. Is, Whether is, you do right, are, also they'll tell. When you do wrong, also they will tell. That is <laughs> why we are, talk to them and talk to too, too much is no, necessary. I'm, talk, I'm, talking yeah, very, not, talking not going very much. Very much. The patient. I'm not going to answer the question. I'm just, I'm just bringing out the scenario. That's it. Yes, yes, yes we agree. Giris, we agree. There is, there is one of the things you have to, you have to face two situations: legal and social. Social. So, yes. as far as social part is concerned, and newspaper part is concerned, <laughs> even if you have explained everything, even if you have done uh, uh, at per your best ability to deal with the situation in the given situation, even then, newspaper will write anything. Exactly. Nothing to worry. Me. Nothing to worry for that because memory no. of people is very short. Exactly, sir. Yes. Yes. I will just one day headline. 
Uh, no, you don't have to worry. Is always against the doctors. Printed newspaper will be vanished within no time, and it doesn't affect any uh, in your practice. It, it that's it. That's it. That's what. Really. And yeah, exactly. What about the point, do, sir? What, the, the public do, memory, public eyes. memory is only twenty-four hours. Believe yes. me. <laughs> yes. To summarize all the stalwarts, I would say that yes, what Rekha Madam has given is very right. That uh, first thing is uh, communication is important. Counseling, as very sir said, is important. And what M C Patel said that emergency treatment while counseling is also important. And then shift the patient while escorting the patient. So uh, thank you all the faculties for this input for this question. Doctor Sivaga, next question, please. Yeah. So, uh, sir, I would like to add the rights of doctors. Like, a doctor can turn away the patient before starting treatment. Right to select drugs, can select investigations and method of treatment, can delegate the powers to properly trained personnel or colleagues, can decide regarding visits and fees to be charged. and can obtain written refusal in case the patient does not want to do as advised but at the end i would also like to say that as mc patel sir has rightly said that before referring any patient or shifting any patient we should give emergency treatment and then refer um, sir i will just add one more uh, one more uh, yes, line yes, straight uh, medical ethics uh, mci regulations say under three conditions you can refuse that is documented in the regulations that you can refuse the patient under three circumstances one if the doctor is unwell himself or herself that includes an alcohol influence second if there is a direct social or physical or any other threat to the doctors and third if there, if there are previous dues unpaid dues okay sir yoga just two lines from me dr alka kutte yes. refer the patient with proper referral sheet take signature on your oc and give call to the tertiary care center that such and such patient i am uh, referring to your hospital so that the hospital will reserve the bed for the patient and accompanying patient who can who can do uh, proper uh, uh, care of the patient during transit of the patient so proper referral letter calling to tertiary care center accompanying person should be able to manage the condition of the patient these three things to be done while referring the patient and yes. refer to a doctor whom you know well who is your friend as far as possible for our safety yes ma'am <laughs> so yes sudesh doshi sir can you just elaborate on the sections which are applicable for the medical practice like yeah, these are the sections yeah, just, of just medical. for the information yes these are just to enumerate them So each section can have a complete separate webinar. Section fifty two defines what is good faith. A thing during good faith. Section eighty seven to ninety one are related to consent. Section three zero four a, as we all know, is the death of patient due to negligence. Three one two to three one six are related to abortion or miscarriage without proper consent. Three one nine to three two two causing grievous hurt or disfigurement. Three hundred forty to three hundred forty two wrongful confinement of patient. And four ninety nine is defamation. Just to enumerate the things, uh, these are a, a very long question. This can be just to enumerate things. Next slide, please. So these are directions given by Supreme Court in emergency situations. Legal and ethical obligation to attend an emergency situation is totally absolute and paramount. Right? This is what we all discussed. That all laws of procedure are suspended when a doctor attends a patient in emergency. While operating in extremely emergency situations, the court will allow greater mistake on the part of surgeon or his assistants. And law courts are not supposed to summon medical profession to give evidence unless it is emergency. So yes. law has been very for, for, fortunate for us. Next, yes. I think the last line is uh, the most important, sir. And also the uh, in case of emergency, I think no law works uh, as I, I have heard. Of. So uh, how to avoid litigations? It begins right from the OPD. Identify problem patients. Give time for detailed counselling. be conscious of your limitations give emergency treatment and then refer disclose all the likely expenses do not give any false promises hopes and guarantees and maintain a copy of prescription and refer slip and in case of any mishap be empathetic to the patient and the relatives yes one which i'd like to add is now in maharashtra it is coming on great way in solapur we had one case when the charges were not displayed in the hospital and the hospital was being like so we should learn to obey these laws दो लॉज आर समटाइम्स वेरी फनी अपन मन तो कायदा गाड़ा हुआ बट इट इज अ लॉ सो वी हैव टू ओबे इफ द बॉम्बे नर्सिंग होम एक्ट सेज दैट द चार्जेस शुड बी डिस्प्लेड आउटसाइड द ओपीडी देन वी शुड बी एबल टू डिस्प्ले वी शुड नॉट बी शनिंग अवे फ्रॉम आवर रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी टू डू 
display the charges. Whenever you get a menu card in the hotel, the charges are displayed. You go to even a barber shop, the charges are displayed. Then why you should be ashamed of displaying your charges? You should display the major charges which are there. And if there are any minor things or add-ons, you can always counsel the patient while admitting that these will be add-ons if you take something extra. So we should be following the law. Uh, one question I would like to ask to all the panelists: whether uh, medical practice is now becoming a defensive practice? Yes, Dr. Manjur. And whether it is good or bad? Dr. Manjur, please unmute yourself. Dr. Manju, ma'am, please. Some communication problems. Yes, Dr. Rekha, you can take it. Dr. Rekha, yes. you can take it. Dr. Manju has some problems. Yeah, I'm there. Yes, uh, you are, I suppose you're asking me. Uh, yes. yes, what is the question? Good medical practice, a defensive practice. I totally agree, Dr. Siyoga. It is becoming more of a defensive practice. We want to save our skin, as you have put, like, explain right from the beginning. The very previous slide, what you mentioned was that probably, like, display the charges or explain everything, counsel, know your limitation, whatever is Becoming a defensive practice, I totally agree because you want to have a very uh, everything very peaceful practice, and uh, it is one way right and one way wrong. But most probably, it's for the uh, not a very good move, not a positive move because. We are we belong to the previous generations practicing for the past 30, 32 years, where it was the entire scenario was totally different. We never bothered about the medical legal issues, would explain everything, more of a family kind of relations, which can't go now. We have to change according to the uh, present day scenario. And uh, we have to be defensive and we can't come out of that. But uh, in the melee, what happens is uh, the patient is the one, though they don't know or the, though they don't understand, they are the uh, uh, scapegoats in the sense they are made to pay extra for the probably unnecessary investigations or what we call is we want to be defensive and we want like a patient comes with a headache or patient comes with a history of head, head injury. We want to the CT scan immediately for that patient. So these kind of things, the placenta previa, not very sure on ultrasound, immediately you jump to MRI. So these are the things we want the patient, thinking that patient has to do better and ultimately we will be safe. We subject them to more cost, the admission, uh, maybe unnecessary admission, unnecessary investigations, unnecessary drugs, whatever. So that is how it's going. Yes. May, may I add to this? Gastritis. May, may I add to this? Yes, yes. Yes, yes, sir, please. With this defensive medical practice, there are two two uh, scenarios. One is a positive defensive medicine, Hello? and the second is a defensive medical. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Can I continue? Yes. yes, yes. After that, doctor. After this, sir. Yeah. Two aspects. There is a positive defensive medicine and negative defensive medicine. I will elaborate it shortly. Positive defensive medicine means doing something which is not necessary just because there is a fear of litigation. That means excess indication, as Dr. Rekha has already elaborated, which puts a burden onto the patient and burden onto the resources and burden onto everything which is happening in many uh, uh, European countries and America itself, where I am I, at present. The second is the negative defensive medicine, which is again detrimental in the sense if the, a doctor himself goes into a negative attitude, he tries to retire early, he restricts his own patients, he doesn't want high risk patient in spite of his experience, he tries to avoid patients. And this is dangerous to the society because the society is lacking some experienced person just because it is a negative defensive medicine. So it's your take. The medicine is medical practice is definitely becoming defensive. There's no question about it. And it's a need of the time to become defensive. But you have to get a balance between positive defensive medicine and negative defensive medicine. Absolutely. Dr. Manju, please, your take on this. Good evening, all. Uh, I agree that today's scenario is uh, all doctors are doing negative. Why litigations? There are litigations are increasing, and uh, there is no capping on the compensation by the court. Court are awarding high compensation to the uh, petitioner, and that's why the doctors become defensive. But this is not the good scenario, and uh, the medical medical practice of uh, India is also uh, not going in good direction. And the, there is one more addition to this defensive. Practice. 
generation uh, students are learning from them and as soon as their md is done nobody is taking nobody i mean very less number of people are taking obstetrics they want to deviate themselves and branch out to a day practice day hour practice or a defensive practice yes. many students are not even preferring obgy by nowadays Yes, they yeah. practice. That's what I said. Dermat, radiology, and all that. Yes. On top of that, even if it is obstetric, they branch out within no time. Uh, uh, one more, 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 one unnecessary referrals for small ailments and all these things there are are detrimental and this is what at present is responsible for reducing or decreasing the faith in our medical practice they don't believe that this is necessary if you don't know it why you are referring why you are admitting unnecessarily these things are happening so as i told you you have to find a golden mean in between positive and negative defensive medicine उटिकल प्रॉब्लम what is it what is the etiology what is the many short uh, public awareness programs have to be done we have to have a good liaison with our uh, own uh, patients as well as with our colleagues and i would say the media the police the ngos so somewhere we have to i think put a stop to this excessive negative defensive practice because it's going to put as dr reka said make society a scapegoat and the poor patient is not able to afford all this so let us i think few of the panelists could add how could we stop or draw the line of this uh, defensive practice i think we have to do something about that so and i do it like we create a lot of awareness programs and spend time with them do some uh, public uh, i mean programs in your own hospital so that they have a good opinion about yes this doctor is really trying to help us out उटरा communication like bonding so that they come to know that this doctor is genuine doctor whatever has happened it is because of the destiny of the patient in spite of good prudent care by the doctor so it needs it needs a long like uh, continuous efforts by our foxy members and i think soyoga panel is with me we have started know your law series so that doctor comes to know what are the laws that govern their practice in day to day practice rather because unless and until we wrong you know we can't um, protect ourselves in the court of law and for that each and every patient should be given prudent care we can't give guarantee of care but we can we, can, we can't give guarantee of cure but of course can give guarantee of care mm -hmm. so knowing your laws is very important and public contacts convince mm -hmm. them that you are a good doctor clearing okay. okay rather 
We go to next case, Yoga. Dr. Yes, Yoga, this defensive practice itself is the basic reason for our increase in the incidence of caesarean section. Yes, ma'am. Yes. <laughs> that was what I wanted to highlight. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and that's why it's the community business. practice in the hospital and that uh, network outside the hospital is very important other than what Dr. Bharti said. Yes, yes this is situation yeah. to 35 year old G3P2 alone with 37 year previous, previous to LSCS. Now, first was a 10 year female child, then second was a male child, but day down day 10 due to aspiration. Patient was posted for elective section but was reluctant for tubal ligation and consent was not taken. Then uh, everything was fine because of Shubhubhara, there was a male baby which delivered and now they said now they want to do a tubectomy. So intraop patient requested for tubal ligation, the baby is okay. Husband verbally consented, tubal ligation was done. The doctor asked the sister to take the signature of the consent forms. Now further thing is the sister forgot to take the consent on the paper and after 10 days the baby died again. So now what are all things which have gone wrong in this? Uh, I would ask Dr. Jyoti. Dr. Jyoti has not uh, participated till now, I think. Is she there, Dr. Jyoti? I think she's not there. No, I'm there. Yes, yes, Dr. Jyoti. So <laughs> this is the case. So what do you think? What went wrong in all these cases? All this case? Actually, when the Shubh Muhurta, two, three things went wrong. First, yeah. all the documentation part should be very clear. Yes. And if sister forgot, there should be one duty doctor or one resident doctor or doctor himself or herself. They are assigned to take uh, consent on a valid consent paper at least before caesarean section or in the uh, midway between the caesarean section is going on and when patient or husband said to take consent. There is no, uh, if the patient is going under the caesarean section and you have not taken the consent from the patient and only from the husband, they too was after 10 days, you came to know the consent is not taken. So false is from the doctor's side. Second thing, you have, you should not encourage this mood type of things. If you are not having any particular uh, reason to do cesarean section, you are not having a valid indication. So you she should... Was to LSCS. Yeah, indication. Was to LSCS. Indication to have. But LSCS, but the mood part of thing should not be written in the doctor's paper. There should be written only the previous CS with CPD or previous CS with fetal distress. It means just like this and the baby size is very good, a 3 kg baby, above the 3 kg baby. So actually documentation part is very poor and uh, uh, patient signature, the forged signature always not encouraged. Actually. Dr. Bharti, what is your take? What all went wrong? Well, first yeah. thing is, first huh. thing is I would say that uh, initially when the patient did not want the tubal ligation, that has to be documented there. And of course, you could always counsel her. And the second thing is when the patient is already under anesthesia, she requests, I think her consent is of utmost importance. Her husband's consent is not at all valid. So that is the first mistake. If the patient is under general anesthesia, she's not able to give consent. You do not do the tubal ligation at yes. all. They, our and if at all the, yes. yes and if at all they consent, you ha if the patient is conscious and awake, you could of course speak to her and maybe do a recorded consent also but i would say do not do it because she has not given the consent in the normal senses yes there in is one clearly senses. written in the consent uh, consent yes. part of thing if the patient is not uh, properly oriented or not able to give a consent in a total oriented uh, uh, form of her mind frame of her mind so this consent is not valid and consent part should be valid only when the both party are giving consent then on and in the uh, this validity is only when the doctor and patient in the fully oriented yes. frame of mind give consent then the, the, so and the husband's the consent is marriage. not valid husband's consent is not valid and not necessary also sir. just the husband's consent and you could always go for a temporary method you could have just inserted a PPIUCD and then tell them come back later for a lab sterilization or a vasectomy why not even talk to them about vasectomy Dr. Me, Santosh, me, would me, you me, like to uh, take the okay. consent of the patient prior to taking her for caesarean section or it's on the table? Will the consent that is, the table that is on the table be valid, valid or not? No, Even no. On table, on table yes. consent has no meaning, no legal standing. What, what, what I practice at my place is we take a consent if patient is ready 
for surgery and if there are some intra operative mishaps we can any time we can take a call of not doing surgery and counsel the relatives that we have not done surgery for so and so reason and offer them alternative mode of contraception till they decide to go ahead with the permanent method in this case tubal for that matter tubal ligation is something which is not an emergency life saving surgery for which on table emergency consent of a relative you can justify in the court of law but for this it is not justifiable better to avoid it मेंटली साउंड सो वेन एवर वी टेक दिस टाइप ऑफ कंसर्न on part of prosecution there could be argument that when patient gave consent patient was not with sound mind yes this consent is picture. not valid one thing so prior consent is valid uh, uh, valid if patient has given consent for tubal sterilization well in advance they can withdraw they can withdraw consent before going for termination i mean uh, tubal ligation so we can explain that way and rightly said by santosh it is not immediate necessary to save life of patient to go for tubal sterilization patient is not going to pregnant uh, next day so in this type of situation you cannot uh, go and in common uni uniform consent foxy we have prepared almost 30 consent and in those consent part 2 is undertaking and in that undertaking part we have mentioned that in this type of situation when doctor has to take decision beyond the scope of consent given by me either she can or i i i authorize my doctor to do need pull uh, uh, whichever is best for me so in this situation no need to go for discussion with relative but if she has given consent like this in this situation doctor will discuss with mr or mrs so and so which waiting outside operation theater you can discuss with that relative and you can very well Uh, 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 go uh, for surgery accordingly. So, otherwise, you know, otherwise, sir, otherwise sir, if sir, sir. Uh, consent is not, then better not to go for that. And one, one more thing, only one thirty uh, uh, second. I will take as hmm. per one of the decision taken in Supreme Court. Supreme Court had said, when you are going to go full, uh, put full stop on reproductive capacity of that couple, consent of husband is required. but as per government guideline government circular in respective state it is written that for female sterilization operation consent of husband is not required so wherever you are working in which state you are working if there is government circular guideline on part of uh, government that uh, consent of husband is not required then you can be saved in court of law on that ground also what i wanted is कैन देर बी कंडीशनल कंसेंट उनका कंसेंट क्या होता है पहली दो लड़कियां है इस बार अगर बेटा होता है तो टूबेक्टमी करो अगर बेटी होती तो नहीं करने की है तो पेशेंट ना रहना होता है नहीं 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 कंसेंट तो प्रायर लेना है ना बट दिस कंडीशन कंडीशनल कंसेंट दैट इफ बॉय इज डिलीवर्ड then i am willing to go for sterilization operation it is clear so if it is boy then you can very well go with sterilization operation no issue but dekha what is your take on this but but if if she is if it is female then naturally you have not to go because she has not given you permission if female delivers saili yes dr sudesh yeah. uh, these kind of cases where you are very sure that you are subjecting her to cesarean section regarding tubectomy it is very much necessary before much earlier say at the 35 33 weeks itself or even earlier to tell them sitting in your chamber with the couple together and if want other family members also counseling completely that one temporary methods uh -huh. are available second if you want tubectomy both of you should sign and husband should be there 
there last minute and third thing i would not agree for tubectomy from my side if they ask my opinion i'll say no tubectomy because previously your child male child that too died so i really don't know what the problems are some problems can emerge later and tubectomy is a permanent method please go for temporary method we can as well do lap sterilization it is not a big operation unlike your cesarean section we are not going to open your abdomen all these things i explain even today to all my patients myself when they want to back to me and in spite of that they want i write all these things and take a separate consent of both of them in spite of this explaining that it is a permanent method both of them want sterilization at any cost we have explained the pros and cons and what pros and cons we have explained i will i will add one more to rekha's uh, i fully agree with rekha's uh, counseling i will add one more aspect to rekha's counseling i always tell i uh, emergency basically tubectomy is a very national importance and it has lot of repercussions forget that but i have add one more point to the counseling with the patient that certain diseases are not obvious up to 6 months of baby 6 months age of baby and i will wait i will prefer to wait until the baby is fully vaccinated by 18 months of age that i exactly. always add to the patient and the patients are immediately immediately uh, happy they uh, postpone their tubectomy and as rekha told tubectomy is no more a big operation it's laparoscopically we can convince the patient that it's a simple operation though equally dangerous but simple and we can convince the patient in that way that it is not very important to get it done immediately you can defer it as long as you can Yes, yes and yes. once the milestones are satisfied of the baby yes, then only okay the milestones should be fine even when they ask after the ultrasound report the also one. they ask that we have to tell that ultrasound is also not full proof the let the baby be born let us see the milestones then the social smile whatever you want then only everything is fine same thing holds good for tubectomy also thank you i i will insist on vaccination the patients are immediately convinced yes vaccination Okay. So just I, one sentence I would like to quote here. Uh, we have seen many cases where the patient has agreed for TL consent before cesarean section, yes. and after some month or two, the baby baby died. Yes. In that case, our counseling documentation should have been proper. That risk to the baby was explained even in a early neonatal age because of the LPW, because of meconium, or whatever things. So in that case, counseling, communication, and documentation. In spite of that, patient says, "No, I want TL during cesarean only." So this this documentation will help us because we had counselled prior to cesarean section, and her she was not in mental stress; she was relaxed. That time only consent was taken. In spite of explaining everything, if she go undergoes TL, then it is left to them because they have agreed after the counselling communication. So what Doctor Kupdekar sir was telling is hundred percent correct because sometimes they दे जस्ट से डॉक्टर आपने यदि बताया रहता था तो हम लोग सीजर के वक्त नहीं करते थे हम बाद में करते थे तो फॉर दिस दिस अबंडेंट क्वेश्चन शुड बी टेकन काउंसलिंग कम्युनिकेशन एंड डॉक्यूमेंटेशन देन यू कैन गो फॉर टीएल बिकॉज समटाइम बेबी जस्ट टू इयर्स ओल्ड प्रीवियस बेबी टू इयर्स ओल्ड एंड शी इज इंसिस्टिंग ऑन टीएल वी एक्सप्लेन बस शी शी नो डॉक्टर अभी हमें टीएल करना है बाद में हमें रेस्ट मिलती नहीं है दैट टाइम दिस डॉक्यूमेंटेशन This is a common scenario because we are in we are operating we are in the operation theater and we ask our sister or some uh, RMO to take the consent and the form is filled and the consent is not taken. So this may happen. It may happen. To summarize, what I would like to say first is consent should be taken before the patient goes to the theater, not in the theater. Secondly, she should be told that tubectomy is a irreversible method. thirdly she should be counseled about immunization of the baby and age of the prior baby she should be very well told that in spite of going antenatal ultrasound and in spite of the pediatrician examining the baby immediate post op you will doing tubectomy within 5 minutes which is not a good time to assess the baby few congenital anomalies like uh, heart disease or some intestinal disease may crop up afterward so it is better to go for a uh, uh, temporary method like what dr bharatiya suggested in her comment Go for PPIOCD and what I suggest is, अगर उसके हस्बैंड को उससे बहुत ज़्यादा प्यार है, तो चार साल के बाद उसका वैसे कभी भी, भी कर सकते हैं. <laughs> yes. yes. Thank Sir, you. Can I add something? Yes, yeah, Doctor yes. Jaini, please. Yeah. So just as we have Foxy uniform consents, I always yes. feel that whenever we have a TL consent, that only mentions that it's a method of pulmonary sterilization. 
but whatever we have to explain to the patient regarding the baby that you cannot assess the baby properly soon after birth or what yes. problem may occur to the baby that should also be uniformly included in that consent so the same message goes for all consents of tubal ligation so i would like even foxy should come out with a consent for tl how it should be a proper consent for tl and if you say it's a permanent method they'll say वैसे भी हमें दूसरा बच्चा नहीं चाहिए नहीं चाहिए हां yes. so, so it may it will not solve all the problems so i would like to highlight yes uh, what is informed consent it's more than just a consent uh, inform the patient and the relatives about all the risks and complications however minor they may be which should be in the patient's own language and it should be taken ideally in a separate room where audio visual facility is there and failure to obtain consent it is a form of medical negligence so Okay, I'll move now to the. Yoga, okay, can I comment? Yes, madam. Yes, ma yes, yes. In the standard, uh, uh, you know, book of the sterilization by NRHM, NHM, there are all the you know standardization of tubal ligation, yes, OC, yes. everything is given. So in that form of consent is also given. You must have seen that book. Yes, so yes. We are taking yes, consent. Yes. Okay, but one must be. It is very. Uh, you know uh, important to have that that consent form also signed, which is given by the government. Because unless and until you sign that form, apart from your whatever foxy etc. inform whatever consent you are taking, you know that sterilization book it has given the consent, and one should also look into that book, and you should take the consent as for the uh, this thing uh, the government format, and because it's so many government places that consent form is there, then the tubal ligation compensation is given. you are aware of that uh, the tubal ligation this is we are talking only about the private but the routinely where we do so hundreds of tubectomy uh, we have done 400 and all the time that form is there signature is there then only the compensation of that uh, 1500 or whatever compensation is given then the compensation is given this yes. is for the information this yes, is right rightly said by mandaki ne it is in uh, that manual given ah. and just uh, sudesh uh, mentioned hmm. that it is reversible but one ah. line should be uh, told at the same time of course it is reversible but guarantee cannot be given that after reversal she will be pregnant oh my so, my my oh, sorry sorry dr patel hmm. my idea was that to apart from the consent which we are discussing you know hmm. here hmm. there is a government standard format yes yes that aha uh -huh. so we should not uh, ignore that also that is yes. what i am trying to bring it to the notice and give a proper message to everybody that was my specimen uh, government consent format includes madam everything is included in government format yes. you know, format exactly very, very elaborate consent Uh, and we we are bound to work, bound to follow that format yes. because in the government I have been doing <clears throat> so many camps, laparoscopy camp, this camp, that camp. So that format and the compensation money. That is very okay. Come <clears throat> on, okay, okay. So we have some tips for good documentation also, as you have rightly said. that we should maintain the medical records in the prescribed format even in case of emergencies and appropriate in entries including all the investigations diagnosis and treatment should be duly made ensure that all the documents and medical records like discharge cards are written by the same person as change in handwriting or ink is often cited as evidence of fabrication make legible entries use standard abbreviations and short forms and do not tamper fabricate or manipulate any medical records Yes. Uh, Professor, I will I just add uh, one or two statements to this. Yes. Uh, yes. Do uh, not redact or overwrite the statements also. Yes. And if you are uh, you want to change some statements in your records, change them but make a note why they are changed, and with reference to where they are changed. Yes. The actually as Patel sir said, uh, the documentation part and everything, and uh, as Bharti has written in the chat box. the other methods of sterilize means other methods of contraception should be told so in our hospital where i work we all, always tell every lscs patient that at the time of cesarean at the time of pregnancy all the tubes get edematous so slipping of ligature is always there and there are fair chances of recanalization so most of the time we avoid 
टिबेक्टमी एट द टाइम ऑफ एल एस सी एस वी ऑलवेज टेल देम कि अभी बहुत फूली हुई ट्यूब है अभी आप मत कराइए ढीले हो जाएंगे टांके आप छह महीने बाद आके कराइए सो बेटर टू अवॉइड एक्चुअली इफ यू आर वी आर वर्किंग इन द प्राइवेट सेटअप विद actually they are getting good compensation if the tubectomy fails or if something happens so most of the time we tell them ke husband ka kara lo ya aap 6 mahine baad aake kara do yes communication itself is a very important tool and these are the tips for good communication first thing is to have a good smile and eye contact with the patient and speak with a simple lay person's language use open ended questions and do not be patronizing and do not lose temper in when in the phase of provocation and many a times we find this situation in our opds as well you go please add you need a witness for this communication <laughs> okay sir okay sir <laughs> any any inputs from any uh, all the stalwarts over here regarding good communication because i think that is most important in today's so that there should be one witness and if the uh, gynecologist is the male gynecologist then always a male uh, female sister should be there in the opd always always yes taken madam and, so, and uh, to be to be a to see agar to be a good communicator we doctors need to de-stress ourselves from our regular practice by mm-hmm. either doing some sort of a yoga meditation walk or reading because that keeps our mood the next day is so happy that we can smile and we cannot get provoked by any sort of uh, uh, provocation by them i think this is very very important to balance our there, there should be sympath there should be difference between the sympathy and empathy we should yes. be empathetic not the sympathetic and uh, always use our brain not our heart when the when But we are coming i would like to add is this uh, simple things like congratulating the person for something see uh, i don't know why but in our indian culture we don't congratulate anyone on anything this is the english or sort of british culture But what i have made it to practice that whenever i see a pregnancy test positive or a patient says that i am pregnant i just simple thing abhinandan tumcho tumhala divas gelele it makes a very the conversation yes. open to the patient it helps it even for tubectomy and all when they say that they want to tubectomy with the cesarean section i say your decision of not having a child is very correct but your decision or the method of doing it is until yes. maybe at a wrong time at a wrong place so we will do it again so you always be positive yes. what do the patient has done is right but there is something wrong which we can correct it yes. Yes. i will just add a flavor to flavor to my own experience in usa my yes. daughter yeah. delivered in usa one month back i am in usa yeah. at present yeah. and after the delivery right from the hospital hospital yeah. everybody was congratulating us everybody, everybody <laughs> congratulations sir we are also congratulating you yeah, we also congratulated you sir not only us people we also congratulated you <laughs> <laughs> thank you so, 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 i learned this from i we have lot of things to learn from hospitality industry udhar to ek darwaza kholte hai hello i think hello, hello, this, yes, what you are saying now just now yeah. what sudesh was telling uh, greet the patient so there is acronym gather g a t h e r yes gather tells everything how to greet how to accept face uh, special expressions etc we have to learn this from hospitality industry five star hotels yes. what you do wrong the respect <laughs> there the attendant there is also sorry sir no sir yes sir he will say yes. this is not allowed we not sir tumhala akka lag ga we will say this is not allowed sir that's why they you go and buy a Trend car see how much they celebrate buying a car we have to learn from them we should celebrate it yes yes from very our true, corporate hospitals uh, wanted to tell yeah, yeah. gather a technique if uh-huh. you use in your daily practice it will be very helpful and what uh, sudesh was telling greeting and all those thing even offering flower after the labor Uh, labor pains are there. She is relaxed now. Her letter come out of came out of the labor. Just greeting with gulab ka pool. Usko acha lagega. So all these gather techniques are very important. And I think communication counseling is a core skill, especially for obstetricians, especially for surgeons, because half of the work is done by counseling and communication. Doctor Alka has husband. Husband. husband to- प्लास्टिक सर्जरी करावी लगे 
It is so difficult. Madam, Amra, 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 Rather, uh, she becomes like, uh, dekho, greeting card dene aai, mere gulab ka flower diya, madam de. Kitta Not and necessary as, rose flower. Yes, what you Dr. Mandra Kini said, I agree to her. But thing yeah. is, you can delegate this to, for example, I am not a very handsome person, but you can this delegate to a person who is more lovely, maybe your some staff, some your wife or some spouse yes, or someone. Anyone, by anyone. By anyone. It can you be can done by anyone. She can yes, go yes. on or he can, she can go on. Congratulate her. Maybe an elderly person, yes, like maybe the senior person, I am not so elderly. Senior person like Dr. Mandakini, who can just yeah. go and keep a hand on her head, bala, tuzo, bala, bala. that would be also very soothing. It will have the same effect as a gulab flower. Yeah, yeah. Doctor, Doctor. 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 We have some hospitals here uh, who are giving a sapling on the birth of every baby. Yeah. 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 That also we can. Dr. Alka, husband to first cut the umbilical cord, then cut the cake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they charge extra for that. They charge 10,000 rupees extra for giving husband the opportunity to cut the cord. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, I would like to add another thing uh, in this communication. communication. One minute, one minute, Rekha. Ah, tell I me. All of you should go to the delivery room of Lady Hudding Hospital or the any any uh, district hospital where yeah, we yeah. have 11,000 babies. Madam, I'm talking your side only. <laughs> <laughs> From one word to the another, another word, this word, I, I was going hazy. So one I evening, know. one evening, just listen to this very important communication. Continuous <laughs> two years of this uh, job, I was calling on my uh, black and white telephone. That you know, that time there was a me, Doctor Rajwad. Every time we used to call my boss, and she used to inform and give the permission for every scissor, ten scissor, nine scissor. So they from there the call used to come. Me, Doctor Rajwad, two 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 a.m., three a.m., four a.m., and I was so used to that doctor. One night when I called her, I told her, me, Rajwade. She said, you are Rajwade, you are who? She sent me on the seven days leave. She said, now, she, my, my the telephone operator, madam, you are not Rajwade, you are not Rajwade. I, I was so psyched by continuously. And, you know, and then I was sent on seven days leave. And she said, the joke is there in the lady hiding hospital, me, Rajwade. So oh, <laughs> <laughs> it is not possible. That's what we want. You have to distress yourself. That's what you have to learn to delegate things. We doctors have very huge ego. Meet Sagala Karnar, meet Sagala Karnar. No, you have to learn this uh, corporate skill and delegate the jobs which can be done by other people. Everything should not be done by me. Meet Caesar Karnar, meet Sonography Karnar, meet Stectomy Karnar, meet Laparoscopy Karnar, meet IVF Karnar. It's not possible. You have to delegate. Choose your specialty. And I have learned this over the years. I have took some tips from Dr. Kumtekar sir also. I run a private hospital, small hospital. But first day when I started hospital, I used to boast. Patient ka IV bhi mai hi lega ta hu, injection bhi mai hi deta hu. Everything I do. But I know that was a foolish thing to do. And after 25 years, I can say what the important things which are necessary only for me to do. I will do it. I can delegate all the things to other people who are good enough and qualified enough. Yes, Yoga, we, uh, go yes, ahead. Yes, yes, yes. Now this is a case number three. And it's a really important case. J just a minute, yeah. A 48 year old woman had complaints of bleeding and dysmenorrhea for two years, for which she visited a gynecologist. Just pardon me. Yeah. She had previous two LACS. She had essential hypertension and was treatment. Her weight was 90 kg and BMI. Actually, I'm not able to see this slide. 35. BMI 35, clinically uterus was 40. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 40 yeah. BMI was 35 and clinically her uterus was 12 to 14 weeks. She had small multiple fibroids on sonography. Her hemoglobin was 8 gram percent. She was advised one unit of blood transfusion and expectantly by this gynecologist. Uh, however, the patient was not willing and she took homeopathy treatment for 6 months. Later on, she got admitted at another gynecologist, Dr. Nalini, in emergency for severe abdominal pain and breathlessness. Now the hemoglobin had dropped to 6 gram percent. Her rest pre profile was normal. PSH, which was done 6 months back, was 
patient now wanted an urgent hysterectomy since there was her son's marriage two months later she was given two units of pcb and was posted for tlh the next day ultrasound fresh ultrasound it showed four intramural fibroids and one large broad ligament fibroid with cystic degeneration consent for tlh was taken one unit of pcb was arranged intraoperatively tlh was started under general anesthesia there was a lot there were lot of adhesions right from placing the umbilical cord bladder was densely adherent to the uterus and while separating there was a small bladder injury tlh was then converted to the abdominal route senior obstetrician and gynecologist consultant was called for help bladder injury was repaired with 30 vicryl in two layers bladder integrity was checked patient was then uh, proceeded with subtotal hysterectomy and one unit of pcv was given intraoperatively and then the patient was shifted to ward in stable condition on post operative day 1 patient was well she was started on oral fluids police was kept in situ patient later on developed high grade fever on day 3 with minimal distension of abdomen and antibiotics were stepped up but patient's condition worsened ultrasound showed moderate intraperitoneal collection patient was then shifted to icu at getwell hospital on the request of relatives but on day 6 patient went in septicemic shock and had to be put on ventilator patient expired the next day doctor advised post mortem but relatives were not willing the relatives did not pay hospital bills of both dr nalini as well as the icu getwell hospital 6 months later dr nalini received a notice from advocate asking for compensation of 1 crore getwell hospital also received a notice for being party to negligence my question is now was this litigation avoidable yes okay yes this is a avoidable actually the con- actually there is the major role of consent yes, in this particular sorry, patient to, sorry sorry i have to leave for an emergency dr shuga please continue and thank you everyone for the uh, thank, you, thank, you, thank, thank you thank you dr sudesh thank, thank you very much thank, thank you thank you sudesh actually the this particular patient is a total patient of the non non documentation of the consent even in the opd paper when the second doctor see the patient saw the patient she should have written the that patient is came from some another hospital and not took the treatment the actually the opd consent should also be there then the second part is in the consent only uh, uh, before taking for the hysterectomy the route of operation it should be clearly mentioned that any time the tlh can be converted in the abdominal and when the abdomen and if there are all the all all complication should be written in the consent form only the bladder injury the intestinal injury or injury to other other abdominal part they should be written clearly ye ye operation mein ye 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 cheeze ho sakti hain third thing shifting shifting of the patient to the higher center ye bhi prior to the uh, uh, prior to the tlh it should be written in the consent form only ki at the course of the operative procedure if needed the patient can be shifted to the higher center the requirement of the blood should be there yes if everything should be covered in the consent form then the litigation is avoidable yes yoga what i think uh, i think yoga what i feel uh, we are just uh, there are panelists who are there yes ma'am the panel so better uh, 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 opportunity yes, yes, to panelists that... because we are there just uh, for listening to what panelists say so they are there otherwise they will not get chance to speak uh, sahil is there many people are there no they them get chance even sarupa is there yes i would like to ask this question to swarupa madam this yes, swarupa madam if you are there Sarupa is not there. No, Sahili also there. Sahili is also there. Sahili can take this. Second. Yeah, uh, in this patient, when the patient goes to the second doctor Nalini, she should have seen that the previous history of the patient. So, as you rightly said, first of all, you should be able to identify what is the problem patient in your OPD. So, this patient has already been to a gynecologist, has been advised hysterectomy, but has not complied to her treatment. so the first thing is you have to identify that this patient might be a problem for you in your operative or post operative period the second thing is her hemoglobin dropped down from 8 to 6 g now any patient who is so severely anemic ideally should be treated should be given blood transfusions but whenever you give blood transfusions it is understood that the hb does not rise immediately 
and so you need to give some time to the patient to stabilize before the operator the third thing is the tsh was done 6 months back which is 5.4 so you need to repeat the investigations maybe the tsh is raised you need to take a fitness from the physician side that whether this patient is fit for doing tlh the third thing is if hysterectomy is not an emergency so unless whatsoever the patient tells you that i have a son's marriage or i have some important family function unless you think that it has to be done in dire emergency you should not have posted the patient at all for this hysterectomy surgery that is what i feel whatever yes. complex this patient is already an high risk patient so what all possible complications are there should have been written in the consent form and they should be doubly explained to the patient because this patient you know is already a problem patient she has refused treatment from the previous doctor so it's very likely that she is not going to agree to or agree to your mode of management so you need to doubly tell the patient and relatives what you are going to do what complications may arise so that has to be told to the patients finally when this complication has occurred now this complication can occur has occurred in this patient but maybe even if you have posted this patient at a later date the same complication would have occurred because history of previous to lcs would have remained the same so adhesion part would have remained the same but if you have taken a proper consent from the patient then probably you will get out of this litigation earlier yes any very well uh, expressed uh, sally Uh, I would uh, also invite uh, inputs from Dr. Santosh or Dr. Rekha, madam. Uh, yes, yes, Bharti, ma'am. Yeah, I totally agree with Dr. Saheli. As she has said, this hysterectomy could have been deferred by first correcting the anemia, giving her some time. It was not an emergency. Second, she's a case of previous LACS, high BMI, huge fibroids. I think when you take her up for TLH, you need to have a team. who is experienced in uh, tertiary laparoscopic uh, endoscopic surgery and uh, the third thing is uh, before you endeavor even to uh, take her up for this surgery i don't go by the social functions they are in a hurry to get in and get out of the hospital i think this is very very important in our practice of course yes ma'am that's what i want to add on to whatever dr saheli because she is very well enumerated all the deficiencies yes doctor so yoga i would like to add one or two tips over both of them they have almost explained everything uh, one is that she, she had history of breathlessness that should make us alert that uh, whether it is just anemia or something else Uh, that part we have to take care of, and pre-anesthetic checkup is very very important. Other than the physician fitness ECG, everything pre-anesthetic checkup is very very important. And second thing, as jo Dr. Jyoti said, all our patients we take hundred percent. It's a dual consent. Like any time we may have to convert to, though we are capable of doing most of the times by laparoscopy. This is what we should say that there is a remote chance that we may convert it into the open kind of surgery for the benefit of the patient. This is the second thing I would like to add. So these are the two important things. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Actually, okay. in the may I say anything, uh, Suyoga? Yes, ma'am. Uh, yes. 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 yes, yes Though this is the case of TLH, but many times when we take the patient for the vaginal hysterectomy, also we clearly write in the consent paper that if there is some adhesion or there if we uh, we feel some difficulty then we can go in the abdominal route also the route of the surgery the shifting of the patient the need of the blood transfusion or the blood component that should be always and as rekha madam said uh, this is the mandatory thing in the taking the psc and the pre medical checkup or uh, pre anesthetic checkup now each and every every very when the government or the private setup the anesthetic and medical checkup is mandatory so it 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 should be taken it would be taken in this patient also but as uh, sailee said correctly the patient is saying the son's marriage these things are not actually not encouraged in our practice but most of the time when we are working in the corporate hospital as i am working in the charitable where, where i can shout on the patient and say just come after one month but in the corporate there are such type of pay, uh, pressure on uh, the gynecologist also to do the surgeries so when such type of patient usually comes to us usually comes to us they say ki hame jana hai us jana hai pe bachche ki shaadi hai we do such patients in our practice we do such patient but with proper consent of proper documentation and with every every test every test should be done if you Many have times complete. madam we come across patients who are being investigated and completely prepared for uh, hysterectomy and then she 
comes to us just yes. for the sake of uh, the money money charges money. are less or yes. uh, something uh, she might not be agreeing with and then we are very much tempted to accept the patient's petition then the, the, then the, there is a very fixed rule if the patient come totally prepared from the another gynecologist then the all the blood the recent at least cbc urine btc ct it would be repeated and if the sonography is the older more than 15 days then it should also be repeated yes ECG. and ecg ecg also repeated means on the day of the surgery it should be done a day prior to the surgery whether patient is saying humne kal hi karaya tha parso hi karaya tha but if the patient is admitted under you you have to repeat everything again and again in your institution only so and in highly are, morbid uh, i think even a echocardiography is what we need to do because just an ecg may not be helpful a tsh was borderline obese lady anemia as dr reka said i think an echocardiography also should be done in such cases so uh, santosh 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 was also there okay i think he has left now santosh is not there but i will summarize this uh, whether this uh, the answer to this is that yes we can like we could have avoided all this if we would have explained all the possible complications especially the high risk factors and have should have taken the written informed detailed consent and the procedure specific consent like whether uh, whenever time uh, is needed or uh, we may be able to convert it into an abdominal hysterectomy and uh, considering the bladder injury we should have called a neurosurgeon to repair the bladder injury complications they are known to occur and they may occur in any surgery but then the, it, the patient and the relative should be very well informed and this should be documented on documented on the paper and the timely steps should be taken also communication between the treating doctor and patient relatives will help to avoid litigations and if there is an untoward complication or an unexpected complication we should not hesitate to call the relatives in the operating room or the operation theater and inform and can we can also show them what the things are going wrong and in need of time we should call our experts or our colleagues so as to help us rekha so yes, just rekha, now the litigation is there time. i would like to just add one deficiency in this case the post mortem was mandatory in this case in spite of patients not relate is not allowing it that is there should have been information to the police and pm was mandatory actually was when our the defense it was yes sir when dr kumtekar sir correctly said that when we are doubt about the death of the patient better help that post mortem will help that we are we are not negligent in operating upon the patient because the other thing will be clear from post mortem report a doctor is not negligent what i wanted to highlight in this case especially she was a high risk patient obese patient nothing was emergency uh, blood products blood dena zaruri tha iske baad hi wo surgery ke liye jana tha lekin in hurriedly if you take something risk high risk consent also that must be uh, before after communication and counseling what can happen to patient and second thing even if we are experting uh, uh, suturing the bladder what evidence says or what the litigation say even if you are expert in your um, the, that skill of preparing the bladder or whatever you should ask urologist to stand by also and he will sign the papers that in front of him you are repaired or you can take her his assistance while repairing the bladder because tomorrow the court can ask you if there is some leakage some fistula is there court can ask why you repaired the bladder so in our scenario wherever urologist is available though we are able to repair the bladder or all this thing we must send request to zero surgeon sir please come i have started but please come because he will be there who will be writing notes for you that in his witness in his presence or rather he has repaired the bladder so that becomes a strong defense i have taken almost all prudent care what the complications deserve and i have invited the zero surgeon he has helped me to repair the bladder in spite of that it is something happens like fistula is there some urine leak is there that was because of many uh, morbid condition in the patient obesity adhesions inside the abdomen there are many uh, co morbidity associated to the patient so all these proper counseling communication and taking the help of the uh, super specialist will save us in the court of law suppose this patient 
but but if you are working at a place where urologist is not available then no question arises no court question arises so in court of law whenever you are facing this type of situation all the points are taken into consideration where you are practicing with which resources you are practicing so if urologist is available it is always better to involve him if he is not then you can very well go with repair uh, legally uh, also you can be saved uh, that you try to contact urologist but urologist was not available that way if urologist is not available and surgeon is available then also uh you can involve surgeon also no issue but if surgeon is also not in in uh, available you can very well go with repair because in curriculum of our obgyn how to deal with bladder injury is taught and in i of law whatever you are taught you are able to deal with it is presumed by law as far as your uh, uh, skill is concerned so that way you are safe <coughs> yes sir uh i had come across one patient who had undergone uh, abdominal hysterectomy and she had a discharge card with notes written of ndvh so i think discharge summary uh, all is also important and if this patient would have survived or uh, patient has history of bladder injury should it be written on the discharge card and whether all the things should be mentioned on the discharge card yes in case of complication post operative counseling is equally important so whatever has happened you have to tell the uh, relative of the patient because if you do not tell naturally you will have to go for catheter for longer time they will ask sir sir madam why catheter is uh, for longer period again you will have to answer so before they tell anything you have to explain that this was happened we have done this and you have to uh, go of course you will be discharged in due course but with catheter and we will have to keep catheter for 2 3 weeks which over the <coughs> advice on our part so in discharge card we have to mention that also there was bladder injury bladder was repaired and instruction instruction about diet to be taken about medicine to be taken about follow up about care of catheter everything you have to uh, uh, write in discharge card yes sir Yes. Sir, what I think, Priyanka, what sir said correctly, maintaining transparency is important. Because as such, she is going. Uh, some yeah, doctor may tell that this happened. If you are you. dealing with if a case with previous death, previous, previous surgery, death. say for example, it is a case of two uh, previous LSCS, and you are going to go for hysterectomy, whether NDVH or whether abdominal anything. It is all likely that bladder may get injured. So, so at the time of taking consent, you will have to explain. We will take utmost care, but in this type of situation, there is possibility. Any fatal it happens, we will repair it. We will get it repaired by us or by expert person. But in this situation, we will have to go with catheter for some longer period. If you have explained this and you have operated, and if the same incidents happen, then you are in a comfortable position. to face the situation from reality so yes. maintaining transparency is important and telling the truth and taking their signature is important because tomorrow if she comes to know through another doctor it will be like betrayal with the patient apne phasaya patient ko dhoka diya and about the patient what has happened what complication has happened to the patient take their signature and follow up is important follow up advice should be written on the discharge yes. card yes. then she will come to you for proper follow yes. if something happens it can be diagnosed by you and give pro proper care to that fistula or whatever leakage is there and but if you don't tell anything tomorrow the same patient will complain the doctor there was damage to the bladder we didn't tell any follow up advice we didn't tell what should be done if some complication is noticed by the patient so all this thing and communication and counseling written everything should be must high risk so concern if you feel that some more reference is required then at in at the time of discharge you have to mention in discharge card also that advice reference with dr so and so or speciality because i would like to quote very quickly one incidence which happened in state of tamil nadu it was premature delivery preterm delivery and baby was admitted in nicu baby was discharged in due course and uh, at the time of discharge 
neonatologists didn't advise them to go for ophthalmic opinion to rule out retinopathy due to prematurity and in due course baby went blind case was filed and compensation of 1.8 crore was awarded to the relative and patient and out of those 1.73 crore was to be uh, recovered from the state of tamil nadu because this happened in government hospital and rest of the amount was to be uh, paid by neonatologists luckily in this case uh, gynecologists were not made party so at the time of discharge important instruction is also to be mentioned in discharge card as far as the reference is concerned yes sir. so uh, i would like to summarize that while writing a discharge summary mention the reason for hospitalization provisional and final diagnosis significant findings during examination course in the hospital and the all the laboratory findings the detailed notes of the operation or the procedure including the surgery notes including the suture materials and the medications given and the condition on discharge instructions and medications on discharge and the follow up instructions at the last we should sign and put a stamp of the hospital yes so at the end i would say that practicing obgyn is a balancing act it is delicate yet strong it needs absolute attention commitment and multitasking the outcome is not predictable and we are all liable to make mistakes hence we should make prior arrangements for our safety professional in indemnity insurance is must and i would like to give a to z tips to avoid litigation a is to avoid shortcuts b is for setting benchmark c is care document evidence based medicine frank explanation to the patients follow your guidelines prepare hospital policies informed consent medical jargon is to be avoided keep your language simple keep yourself updated consider every patient a potent litigant media as we all know is the fourth pillar of democracy and media can put you in trial contributory negligence is also to be noted because and for that we should have qualified staff at the time of need we should help offer to our colleagues reserve all your records employ qualified staff and we should be prepared for risk management surgical drills as well as all the drills should be practiced get yourself trained and retrained unnecessary drugs and procedures are to be avoided value others opinion work within your expertise and the extra hours of work should be avoided stop being a workaholic and at the end we should have the zeal passion and dedication for our profession टाइम because we have many a time we have dilemma whether to do or whether to do, do that and still to maintain uh, ability in a smooth and efficient way only obstetrician can do so <laughs> so yes, thank you so much so yeah, can i give a sir. simple message yes, yes. sir yeah. can you stop sharing uh, or please this this all is scaring stop sharing ha huh? yeah it is all scaring but believe me our medical profession remains the best profession believe in ourselves believe in our profession we will do it we will try to excel ourselves we do ourselves excellent that's all believe in our profession ours is the best profession oh, yeah, so you can just stop sharing na so that oh, we can oh, 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 yes sir uh, dr kumtekar sir your daughter is uh, doctor No, she is not medical. She is IT professional, but he is working in USA. <laughs> so, Girish, uh, uh, Abhinandan. No, thank you, thank you, sir. 
congratulations girish sir you and bharti both are so uh, actually very workaholic really <laughs> bharti is also in us and you are also in us and both are <laughs> joining the year. dr yeah, girish was, we congratulate you in the and chat it was box. almost 4 o'clock thank, thank you thank you it was 5:30 can we can we have a photograph please yes. put the audio on particularly monica monica where are you monica ji mula aale astil the tuition varun i will take the photo madam i will take all smile please <laughs> mc patel sir litigation yes. <laughs> smile always on our face <laughs> so i think i will conclude monica yes. bolwa zara today's uh, topics were very well taken and the panel was uh, this icing on the cake uh, so you have done a wonderful job and kiti sundar concise kela and you know yes. very crystal clear okay. and uh, dr mc patel till now he is uh, giving his inputs and expertise dr uh, girish kumtekar sir from the usa abhinandan thank you thank you jyoti bangla wala alka you are all excellent and best wishes for you all but your elections are after us our election are only <laughs> nay madam that's why we are not flooding too much with the flyers yes, and everything messages. because we know yeah. we know the priority should be given to president and vp election actually yeah, and yes, otherwise yes. it will be all it was the intention of preponing the election because un- un- unnecessarily it gets all crowded na yes so ma'am election is on the from the 1st of july you motivate every one of them to please vote it vote, is right. vote. madam 1st of august 1st august 1st august 2 10 1st 10 did i say anything you know madam it is all me rajwadi sir le me rajwadi stress to condition so sasa parat jala parat jala no problem i think you all should and encourage your colleagues because total voting i think dr mc patel will agree he is the next candidate uh, that total voting from 29000 we are now the official members now and uh, voting comes only 11000 Yes, yes, not even इलेक्ट्रॉनिक वोटिंग अदरवाइज वेन फिजिकल बेलेट वेर देर यू वॉन्ट बिलीव ऑलमोस्ट फोर्टी परसेंट बेलेट वेट इन वेलेट Ah, come back oh, not come not back, voting yeah. properly so i think this I, is a really either more than one person or MP, not MP, sir, mar- this is a real opportunity for everyone yes. this is for the president vice president uh, chairperson please exercise your vote so that the un- unwanted candidate should not come you know we always yes. say the your exercising vote is so important that you don't want other person at the vote you think is not proper should not come that is the main importance of even for the election so please exercise the vote and do the net poll and thank you very much each and everyone thank you thank you very much thank you madam thank you it was a very much available yeah. medical legal webinar madam thank you for, for this voting it was said by somebody that mm-hmm. bad officials are elected by good citizen who do not vote <laughs> yeah yeah correct <laughs> big madam i want i want to put three aims Yes. Thank you, Meg, Madam. Thank you, MC Patel, Sir. M, and thank you, Monica. M, 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 M. Meg, Madam, MC Patel, Sir, and thank you, Monica. Yes. So three Ms. And let it be. I, I, I endorse. I endorse. This is for me. This is for me. Yes. One more thing, Meg. One more thing, Meg. Double M. Wonderful panel today. Sir, thank you, Madam. All the best. Very yes. let me Alka then Jyoti then our Bharti uh, Bharti and, Bharti. Uh, Bharti and um, Rekha. No, it is not Bharti. Rekha is not Rekha. Rekha next year. Rekha is Rekha not next, next year. Next year. Bharti and MC for the twenty-five. <laughs> Well, I think we should take a leave, and uh, it is. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. 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 Thank
Next time, we'll deal with simple cases. <laughs> Congratulations once again, Girish sir. So you're excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much. Girish sir, Girish sir, extend our wishes to your daughter also. Congratulations to all the process to the little one, to the baby sir. Party kadi gaychi kumte ka sir. Party kadi gaychi sola sola. Apre kadi party gaychi. Thank you, madam. Welcome, madam. Thank you very much. थैंक यू रेखा मैडम थैंक यू रेखा